जी हाँ दोस्तों आज हम लोग इस बुक के कम से कम वन लैख वर्ड्स तक इसको रीड करेंगे तो मैं आपको दिखा दूँ कहाँ से स्टार्ट है इसका इसका स्टार्ट है इंट्रोडक्शन से इधर कोई पेज नंबर नहीं दे रखा है इस इंट्रोडक्शन से लेकर के हम लोग हैं पेज 73 तक मैंने यहाँ तक काउंट किया है इट्स वन लैख वर्ड्स एग्जैक्टली वन लैख इस यहाँ इस रिवील्ड वर्ड पर ये एंड हो रहा है और दोस्तों आज हम लोग इसी को ही पूरा पढ़ेंगे मुझे नहीं लगता मुझे कितना समय लग जाएगा ख़त्म करने में चाहे एक घंटा दो घंटा तीन घंटा चार घंटा पाँच घंटा बट मैं करूँगा देखते हैं कब तक होता है थोड़ा पानी पी लूँ इंट्रोडक्शन You do know no one will speak with you, right? I was picking at a salad at a fish restaurant in Cambridge, Massachusetts, in early September 2017, trying my best to get a British mathematician named pa Nick Patterson to open up about his former company, Renaissance, Renaissance Technologies. I wasn't having much luck. I told Patterson that I wanted to write a book about how James Simon's Renaissance founder had created the greatest money-making machine in financial history. Renaissance generated so much wealth that Simon's and his colleagues had begun to wield enormous influence in the worlds of politics, science, education, and philanthropy. And anticipating dramatic societal shifts, Simon's harnessed algorithms, computer models, and big data before Mark Zuckerberg and his peers had a chance to finish nursery schools. Patterson wasn't very encouraging. By then, Simons and his representatives had told me they weren't going to provide much help either. Renaissance executives and other close to Simons, even though I once considered friends, wouldn't return my calls or emails. Even archivals begged out of meetings at Simons request as if he was a mafia boss. They dared not offend it. Over and over, I was reminded of the ironclad 30-page non-disclosure agreement the firm forced employees to sign, preventing even retires from divulging much. I got it, guys, but come on. I had been at Wall Street Journal for a couple of decades. I knew how the game was played. Subjects even recal recalcitrant ones usually come around after all who doesn't want a book written about them jim simons and renaissance technologies apparently i wasn't entirely shocked simons and his team are among the most secretive traders wall street has encouraged in, uh, has encountered loath to drop even a hint how they had conquered financial markets lest a competitor seize on any clue employees avoid media appearances and steer clear of industry conferences and most public gatherings simons once quoted benjamin the donkey in animal farm to explain his attitude god gave me a tail to keep off the flies but i'd rather have had no tail and no flies that's kind of the way i feel about publicity i looked up from my meal and forced a smile this is going to be a battle <laughs> I kept at it probing defenses looking for openings writing about Simons and learning his secrets became my fixation the obstacles he put up only added allure to the chase there were compelling reasons I was determined to tell Simons story a former math professor Simons is arguably the most successful trader in the history of modern finance since 1988 in essence flagship medallion hedge fund has generated average annual returns of 66% racking up trading profits of more than 100 billion dollar of shit see appendix 1 for how i arrive at these numbers no one in the investment world comes close warren buffet george soros peter lynch steve cohen and ray dalio all fall short oh shit jim simons is crazy yaar in recent years renaissance has been scoring over 7 billion dollar annually in trading gains that's more than the annual revenues of brand name corporations including under armour levy stress hasbro and hyatt hotels Here's the here's the absurd thing while those no other companies have tens of thousands of employees there are just 300 or so at Renaissance I have determined that Simons is worth about 23 billion dollar making him wealthier than Elon Musk of Tesla Motors Rupert Murdoch of News Corp and Lawrence Powell Jobs 
Steve Jobs' widow, other at the firm, are also billionaires. The average Renaissance employee has nearly $50 million just in the firm's own hedge funds. Simons and his team truly create wealth in the manner of fairy tales full of kings, straw, and lots and lots of gold. More than the trading success in intrigued me. Early on, Simons made a decision to dig through mountains of data, employ advanced mathematicians, and develop cutting-edge computer models, while others were still relying on intuition instinct and old-fashioned research for their own predictions. Simons inspired a revolution that has since swept the investing world by early 2019 hedge funds and other quantitative or quant investors had emerged as the market's large players, largest players, controlling about 30% of stocks, trading topping the activity of both individual investors and traditional investing firms. MBAs once scoffed at the thought of relying on a scientific and systematic approach to investing confident uh, they could hire coders if they were ever needed. Today, coders say the, the same about MBAs if they think about them at all. Simon's pioneering methods have been embraced in almost every industry and reached nearly every corner of everyday life. He and his team were crunching statistics, turning tasks over to machines and relying on algorithms more than three decades ago, long before these tactics were embraced in Silicon Valley. The halls of government, sports stadiums, doctor offices, military command centers and pretty much everywhere else forecasting is required. Simon's developed strategies to corral and manage talent turning raw brain power and mathematical aptitude into astonishing wealth he made money from math and a lot of money at that a few decades ago it wasn't remotely possible lately simons has emerged as modern day medicine subsidizing the salaries of thousands of public school math and science teachers developing autism treatments and expanding our understanding of the origins of life his efforts while valuable raise the question of whether one individual should enjoy so much influence so too does the clout of his senior executive robert uh, Mercer, who is perhaps the individual most responsible for Donald Trump's presidential victory in 2016. Mercer, Trump's biggest financial supporter, plugged Steve Bannon and Kelly Yane Conway from obscurity and inserted them into the Trump campaign, stabilizing it during the difficult period. Companies formerly owner the Mercer and now the hands of his daughter Rebecca played key roles in the successful campaigns to encourage the United Kingdom to leave the European Union. Simons, Mercer and other Atenasians will continue to have broad impact for years to come. The success of Simons and his team prompt a number of challenging questions. What does it say about financial markets that mathematicians and scientists are better at predicting their direction than veteran investors at the largest traditional firms? Do Simons and his colleagues enjoy a fundamental understanding of investing that eludes the rest of us? Do Simons achievements prove human judgment and intuition are inherently flawed and that only models and automated systems can handle the deluge of data that seems so overwhelm us? Do the triumph and popularity of Simons quantitative methods create new overlooked risks? I was most fascinated by a striking paradox. Simon and his team shouldn't have been the ones to master the market. Simons never took a single finance class oh didn't care very much for business and until he turned 40 only dabbed in trading a decade later he still hadn't had much headway heck simons didn't even do applied mathematics he did theoretical maths the most impractical kind his firm located in a sleepy town in the north shore of long uh, island hired some mathematicians and scientists who don't know anything about investing or the ways of wall street some are even outright suspicious of capitalism yet simons and his colleagues are the ones who changed the way investors approach financial markets leaving an industry of traders investors and other pros in the dust it's as if a group of tourists on their first trip of to, to South America with a few odd looking tools and meager provisions discovered El Dorado and proceeded to plunder the golden city as hardened explorers looking on in frustration. Finally, I hit my own pay dirt. I learned about Simon's early life, his tenure as a ground breaking mathematician and cold war code breaker. Wow. And the 
वर्टाइल अर्ली पीरियड ऑफ दिस ऑफिस फॉर्म कॉन्टैक्ट शेयर डिटेल्स अबाउट नैसेंस मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ब्रेक थ्रूज एज वेल एज द रिसेंट इवेंट्स फीचरिंग मोस्ट मोर ड्रामा एंड इन ट्रूक दैट आई हैड इमेजिंड इवेंचुअली आई कंडक्टेड मोर दैन फोर हंड्रेड इंटरव्यूज विद मोर दैन थर्टी करेंट एंड फॉर्मर नैसेंस एम्प्लॉयज आई स्पोक विद एन ईवन लार्ज नंबर ऑफ साइमस फ्रेंड्स फैमिली मेम्बर्स एंड others who participated in or were family uh, familiar with the events i describe i owe deep gratitude to each individual who spent time sharing memories observations and insights some accepted substantial personal risk to me help me tell the story i hope i rewarded their faith even simon spoke with me eventually he asked me not to write this book and never truly warned me to the project but simon was gracious and have to spend more than 10 hours discussing certain periods of his life while refusing to discuss in as trading and most other activities his thoughts were valuable and appreciated this book is work of non fiction it is based on the first person accounts and recollections of those who witnessed or were aware of the events i depict i understand that memory fades so i have done my best to check and confirm every fact incident and quote i have tried to tell simons story in a way that will appeal to the general reader as well as the professionals in quantitative finance and the mathematics i will refer to hidden markov models kanel methods of machine learning and stochastic differential equation but there also will be broken marriages corporate intrigue and panic traders for all his insights and pre-science simons was blindsided by much that took place in his life that may be the most enduring lesson of his remarkable story finally introduction khatam hua pehla chapter the man who solved the market oh shit fir se introduction jim simons wouldn't stop calling it was the fall of 1990 and simons was in his office on the 33rd floor of midtown manhattan high rise his eyes glued to a computer screen flashing the latest moves in global financial markets friends didn't understand why simons was still at it 52 years old simons had already lived a full life enjoying enough adventure and accomplishment and prosperity to satisfy the ambitious ambitions of his peers yet there he was overseeing an investment fund sweating the market's daily eruptions simons stood nearly 5 foot 10 thought a slight stood and a head of graying thinning hair suggested someone a bit shorter and older seizes enveloped his brown eyes the likely result of smoking habit the could he couldn't kick <laughs> or just didn't want to simon's rugged craggy features and the glint of mischief in his eyes reminded friends of the late actor humphrey bogart on simon's and cluttered desk sat an oversized ashtray awaiting the next flick of his burning cigarette आई साहब सिगरेट बहुत पीता था ये तो ऑन इज वॉल वॉज रैदर ग्रू सम पेंटिंग ऑफ अ लिनिक्स लिनिक्स फीस्टिंग ऑन अ रैबिट नियर बाय ऑन अ कॉफी टेबल नेक्स्ट टू अ काउच एंड टू कम्फर्टेबल लेदर चेयर सैट अ कॉम्प्लिकेटेड मैथमेटिक्स रिसर्च पेपर अ रिमाइंडर ऑफ द थ्राइविंग अकेडेमिक कैरियर साइमस हैड डिस्कार्डेड टू द बी वाइल्डरमेंट ऑफ हिस फेलो मैथमेटिशियंस By then Simon had spent 12 full years searching for successful investing formula early on the traded like others relying on intuition and instinct but the ups and downs left Simon sick to his stomach at one point Simon became so discouraged and employee worried he was contemplating suicide oh shit Simon recruited two renowned and headstrong mathematicians to trade with him but those partnerships crumbled amid losses and uh, uh, acrimony a uh, year earlier simon's results had been so awful and he had been forced to halt his investing <laughs> some expected him to pull the plug on his entire operation now on his second marriage and third business partner simon decided to embrace a radical investing style working with elvin Ber- Ber- berle camp a game theorist a game theorist Simons built a computer model capable of digesting torrents of data and selecting ideal f- trades a scientific and systematic approach partly aimed at re- removing emotions from the investment process man he is genius if we have enough data I, i know we can make predictions simons told a colleague those closest to simons understood what really was driving him simons had an earned a phd at the age of 23 23 ki age mein phd 
and then became an acclaimed government code breaker and renowned mathematicians and a ground breaking university administrator he needed a new challenge and a bigger canvas simon told a friend that solving the mar market's age old riddle and conquering the world of investing would be remarkable he wanted to be the one of the one to use math to beat the market if he could pull it off simon knew he could make billions of dollars maybe even more perhaps enough to influence the world beyond wall street which some suspected was his true goal trading as in mathematics it's rare to achieve breakthroughs in midlife yet simons was convinced he was on the verge of something special maybe even historic a merit cigarette log lodged between two fingers simons reached for the phone to call uh, burley camp one more time have you seen gold simons asked the accent of his gra gravelly voice hinting at boston upbringing yes i have seen gold prices uh, berkeley camp responded and no we don't need to adjust our trading system <laughs> simons didn't push hanging up politely as usual berkeley camp was becoming exasperated by simons pestering however serious and slim with blue eyes behind thick glasses berkeley camp worked on the other side of the country in an office that was short walk from the campus of university of california berkeley where he continued to teach when berkeley camp berkeley camp sorry discussed his trading with graduates of the university's business school they sometimes mocked the method he and simon had embraced calling him quackery <laughs> Oh come on computers can't compete with human judgment one had told Berle Camp we are going to do things better than humans can Berle Camp responded privately Berle Camp understood why their approach screamed of modern day alchemy even he couldn't fully explain why their model was recommending certain trades man he's genius yaar isko pata hai ye kya kar raha hai logon ke upar hans raha hai yaar ye and wasn't just on campus where simon's ideas seemed out of touch a golden age for traditional investing had dawned as george soros peter lynch bill cross and others divined the direction of investments financial markets and global economies producing enormous profits with intelligence intuition and old fashioned economic and corporate research unlike his rivals simon's didn't have a clue how to estimate a cash flows Identify new products or forecast interest rates. He was digging through the reams of price information. There wasn't even a proper name for this kind of trading, which involved data cleansing, signals, and back testing terms most Wall Street pros were wholly unfamiliar with. few used email in 1990 the internet browser hadn't been invented and algorithms were best known if at all as the step by step procedures that had enabled allen turing's machine to break coded nazi messages during world war 2 the idea that these formulas might guide or even help govern the day to day lives of hundreds of millions of individuals or that a couple of former math professors might employ computers to trounce seasoned and celebrated investors seemed far fetched if not outright ludi kraus simons was upbeat and confident by nature though he detected early signs of success for his computer system sparking hope besides simons didn't have a lot of options his once thriving venture investments weren't going anywhere and he sure didn't want to return to teaching let's work on the system simons told uh, berle camp in one more urgent phone call next year i know we can be up 80% it's not sure <laughs> 80% in a year how he is really gone too far burley camp thought such enormous returns weren't likely he told simons and you really don't need to call so much jim simons couldn't stop though eventually it became too much burley camp quit a fresh blow for simons the hell with it i am just going to run it myself simons told a friend around the same time in a different part of new york state 50 miles away tall handsome middle aged scientist started uh, stared at a white board grappling with his own challenges robert mercer was working on a sprawling ibm research center in a westchester suburb searching for ways to get computers to do a better job transcribing speech into text and even translate languages among other tasks rather than follow conventional methods mercer was tackling the, the his problems with an early form of large scale machine learning he and his colleagues were feeding their computers with enough data to 
enable them to perform tasks on their own mercer was ne nearing his second decade at the computer giant however and it still wasn't clear how much he and team could accomplish colleagues couldn't figure mercer out not even those who had spent years working closely with him mercer was unusually gifted he was also or odd and socially awkward every day for lunch mercer ate either a tuna or peanut butter and jelly sandwich packed in a used brown paper bag around the office mercer constantly hummed or whistled usually classical tunes wearing a look of detached amusement much of what came out mercer's mouth was brilliant even profound though it could also be utterly jarring one once mercer told colleagues he believed he would live forever the staffers thought he was serious though historic president didn't see him on his side later colleagues would learn of mercer's deep seated hostility toward government and of radical political views that would come to do dominate his life and affect the lives of many others At IBM, Mercer spent long hours huddled with younger colleague named Peter Brown, a charming, creative, and outgoing mathematician whose dark glasses, thick name of unruly brown hairs, and kinetic energy brought to, to mind a mad professor. The two men didn't spend much time discussing money or markets. Personal turmoil would lead Mercer and Brown to join force, forces with Simons. However, his unlikely quest to crack the market's code and lead an investing revolution would become theirs. Simons wasn't aware of imposing obstacles in his way, nor did he know that tragedy stalked him or that political upheaval would up upend his firm. Looking out from his office onto the East River that day in the fall of 1990, Simons just knew he had a difficult problem to solve. There are patterns in the market. Simon told a colleague, "I know we can find them." <sighs> Introduction khatam hua. Part one shuru hota hai. Money isn't everything. Let's go. In chapter one. Abhi hum nove page par hain. Jimmy Simons grabbed a broom and headed upstairs. It was the winter of 1952 when 14-year-old was trying to earn some spending money at Brex Garden Supply near his home in New York, in Newton, Massachusetts, the leafy Boston, Boston suburb. It wasn't going well. Working in a stock room downstairs, the young man found himself so lost in thought that he had misplaced the sheep manure, planting seeds, and most everything else. Frustrated. The owners asked Jimmy to walk the store's narrow aisles and sweep its hardwood floors. A mindless and deceptive task to Jimmy. The demo, the demotion felt like a stroke of luck. Finally, he was left alone to ponder what mattered most in his life: math, girls, the future. <laughs> They are paying me to think. Weeks later, his Christmas time job complete. The couple. Who owned the store asked Jimmy about his long-term plans. I want to study mathematics at MIT. They burst out laughing. A young man so absent-minded that he couldn't keep track of basic ga gardening supplies hoped to be a math major at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. No less. They thought it was the funniest thing they had ever heard. Simon recalls. The skepticism didn't bother Jimmy, not even the giggles. The teenager was filled with uh, a preternatural confidence and an unusual determination to accomplish something special. The result to supportive parents who had an experienced both high, high hopes and deep regrets in their own lives. Uh, Marcia and Matthew Simons welcomed James Harris to the family in the spring of 1938. She and Matty poured time and energy into their son, who re remained their only child after Marcia suffered a seri series of subsequent miscarriages. Oh, a sharp intellect with an outgoing personality and a subtle wit. Marcia volunteered in Jimmy's school but never had the opportunity to work outside the home. She funneled her dreams and passions into Jimmy, pushing him ac uh, academically and assuring him that success was ahead. She was ambitious for me. Simons recalls, she saw me as a project. Matty Simons had a different perspective on both life and parenting. From the age of six, Matty, one of the ten children, hustled to make money for the family, selling newspapers in the streets and hauling bags for travelers at a nearby train station. When he reached high school age, Matty began working full time. He tried he tried going to night night school, but quit too tired to concentrate. <sighs> 
as a father matty was kind of soft 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 spoken and easy going he enjoyed coming home and spinning tall tales for marcia telling her about cuba's a imminent plans to build a bridge to florida for example as jimmy did his best to mask a grin marcia might have been the family's intellect but she also was remarkably gullible matty would uh, concoct increasingly outrageous stories until marcia finally picked up on the fibs a family game guaranteed to crack jimmy up she didn't usually get it simon says but i did matty worked as a sales manager for 20th century fox driving to theaters around new new england to pitch the studio's latest films shirley temple the era's biggest star was under contract to fox so matty cobbled her films with four or five others and convinced convinced theaters muso <sighs> krayar to pay for the package matty enjoyed his job was was promoted to sales manager sparking hopes that he might rise in corporate ranks matty's plans changed when his father in law peter canter asked him to work as his shoe factory peter promised an ownership stake and matty felt uh, obligated to join the family business Peter's factory which produced upscale women's shoes shoes was a success but money flew out almost as fast as it came in bop a, a heavy set uh, flamboyant man was favored expensive clothing uh, drove a succession of late model uh, cadillacs and wore elevator shoes to compensate for 5 foot 4 stature peter blew much of his wealth and horse races and a series of paramours on paydays peter led jimmy and his cousin richard lori hold piles of cash as high as our heads richard recalls we both loved it peter projected a certain uh, insouciance and a love of life attitudes jimmy later would adopt a native of russia peter shared naughty stories about the old country most of which featured wolves women caviar and a lot of vodka and he taught his grandsons a few key russian phrases <sighs> give me a cigarette and kiss my ass sending the boys into fits of laughter peter plays the bulk of his ca- cash in a safe deposit box likely to shield it from taxes but he made sure to have 1500 dollars in his breast pocket at all times he was found with the exact amount of day he died surrounded by christmas cards from dozens appreciative female friends <laughs> matty simon spent years at as a general manager of the shoe factory he never received the ownership share peter had promised later in life Ma- matty told his son he wished he hadn't foregone a promising and exciting career to do what was expected of him the lesson was do what you like in life not what you feel you should do simon said it's something i never forgot when jimmy liked to do more than anything else was think often about mathematics he was preoccupied with numbers shapes and slopes at age of 3 ach 3 saal se 3 saal ki age se sorry jimmy rubbed numbers and divided them in half figuring out all the powers of 2 up to 1024 before becoming bored one day while taking the family to the beach matty spotted from gasoline per- perplexing the young boy the way jimmy reasoned the family's automobile could never have run out of gas after it used half its tank there would be another half remaining then they used half of that and so on without ever reaching empty <sighs> the four year old had stumbled onto a classic mathematician mathematical problem involving high degree of logic if one must always travel half of the remaining distance before reaching one's destination and any distance no matter how small can be halved how can one ever reach one's destination the greek philosopher zeno of elia was the first to address the dilemma the most famous of group of paradoxes had challenged mathematicians for centuries like many children without siblings jimmy sat with his thoughts of long stretches of time and even talked to himself in nursery school he would climb a nearby tree sit on a branch and ponder sometimes marcia had to come and force him to climb down and play with the other children unlike his parents jimmy was determined to focus on his own passions he was eight dr kaplan the simons family's doctor 
suggested a career in medicine, saying it was the ideal profession for the bright Jewish boy, Jimmy Bristol. I want to be a mathematician or a scientist, he replied. The doctor tried to reason with the boy. Listen, you can't make any money in the mathematics. Jimmy said he wanted to try. He didn't qu quite, quite understand what mathematics did, but it likely involved numbers which seemed good enough. Anyway, he knew perfectly well he didn't want to be a doctor. In school, Jimmy was smart and mischievous, displaying his mother's self-assurance and his father's imp imp impish humor he loved books frequently visiting a local library to take out for, for a week many well above his grades level mathematical concepts captivated with most however at the lawrence school in the brooklyn which counts television new, new casters mike wallace and barbara walters as alumni jimmy was elected class president and finished close to the top of his grade losing out in the latter case to a young woman who didn't find herself lost in the thought nearly as often as he did during the time jimmy had a friend who was quite wealthy and he was struck by the comfortable lifestyle his family enjoyed it's nice to be very rich i observed that simon's later said i had no interest in business which is not to say i had no interest in money <laughs> Adven adventures occupied much of Jimmy's time. Sometimes he and friend Jim Harpel rode trolleys to Bailey's ice cream in Boston to enjoy a pint. When they were older, the pair sneaked into burlesque shows at the old Harvard Theatre. The Saturday morning, as the boys headed out, of the, out the door, Harpel's father noticed binoculars around their necks. You boys going to the old Harvard? He asked, busted. How 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 would you know, Mr. Harpel? Jimmy asked. Not much bird watching around here, Mr. Harpel replied. After ninth grade, the Simons family moved from Brooklyn to Newton, where Jimmy attended Newton High School as an elite public school, well equipped to nurture his emerging passions as a sophomore. Jimmy enjoyed debating theoretical concepts, including the notion that dimensional surfaces could extend forever. After graduating high school. In three years, Simon's thin and solidly built set off and cross country drive with Harpel. Everywhere they went, the 17 years old middle class and until then largely sheltered from hardship, conversed with locals. Crossing with Mississippi, they saw African Americans working as sharecroppers and living in the chicken cops. Recording Reconstruction had left them as a tenant farmers, but it was the same as slavery. Harpel recalls it was a bit of shock to us camping in a state park. The boys visited a swimming pool but saw no African Americans, which surprised, surprised them. Uh, Simon says the heavy set middle aged park employee why no one of color was around. We don't allow no N dash, he said. Niggas. <laughs> Visiting other cities, Simon and Harpel saw. Families living in a abject poverty experiences that left a mark on the boys, uh, making them more sensitive to plight of society's disadvantaged. Simons enrolled at MIT as he had hoped and even skipped the first year of mathematics thanks to advanced placement courses he took in high school. College brought immediate challenges, however, early on Simon's dealt with stress and intense stomach pain, losing 20 pounds and spending two weeks in the hospital. Doctors eventually diagnosed colitis and prescribed steroids to stabilize his health. Overconfident during the second semester of his freshman year, Simon's registered for graduate year in abstract algebra. It was an outright disaster. Simon was unable to keep up with his classmates and couldn't under understand the point of assignments and course topics simon bought a book on the subject and took it home for the summer reading and thinking for hours at a time finally it clicked simon uh, aged subsequent algebra class though he received a d in the upper level calculus course in the sophomore year the professor allowed him to enroll in the next level's class which discussed stroke's theorem a generalization of isaac newton's fundamental theorem of calculus that relates line integrals to surface integrals in three dimensions. The young man was fascinated. A theorem involving calculus, algebra, and geometry seemed to produce simple, unexpected harmony. Simons did so well in the class that students came to him seeking help. I just blossomed, Simon says, I was glorious feeling. 
The way that powerful theorems and formulas could unlock truths and unify distinct areas in math and geometry captured Simons. It was the elegance of it all. The concepts were beautiful, he says, when Simons studied with students like Barry Mazur, who graduated in two years and later would win top mathematician awards and teach at Harvard University, Simons concluded he wasn't quite at their level. <sighs> he was close enough and Simons realized he had unique approach mulling problems until he arrived at original solutions. Friends sometimes noticed him lying down eyes closed for hours at a time. He was ponderer with imagination and good taste or the instinct to attack the kinds of problems that might lead to breakthroughs. I realized I might not be spectacular or the best, but I could do something good. I just had that confidence, he says. One day, Simon saw two of his professors, renowned mathematicians, Warren Ambrose and Isadore Singer, in deep discussion after a midnight at a local cafe. Simon decided he wanted that kind of life, cigarettes, coffee, and ma math at all, all hours. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. It was like an epiphany, a flash of light, he says, away from mathematics. Simons did everything he could to avoid courses demanding too much of him. MIT students were required to enroll in a physical fitness course, but Simons didn't want to waste time showering and changing, so he signed up for R. Krihi and other student Jimmy Mayer, who had come to MIT from Columbia, decided to make the class a bit more interesting, betting a nickel on every shot they became fast friends wooing wooing girls and playing poker with classmates into the night if you lost five dollars practicing shot yourself may i recall simons was funny friendly spoke his minds and often got into trouble as a freshman he enjoyed filling water pistols with lighter fluid and then using a cigarette lighter to create a homemade flamethrower months after simons created a bathroom bonfire in baker house a dormitory on charles River, he flushed at a pint of lighter fluid down a toilet and closed the door behind him. Glancing back, Simon saw an orange glow around the door frame. The inside of the bathroom was flame. Don't go in there, he, he screamed to approaching classmates inside the toilet. The fluid had heated up and ignited into a fireball. Luckily, the dome was built with dark red rustic bricks and the fire failed to spread. Simons confessed to his crime and paid the school $50 total in 10-week installments for the necessary repairs. By 1958, after three years at MIT, Simons had enough credits to graduate at the age of 20, earning a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics before entering graduate school, though he yearned for new adventure. Simon told a friend Joe Rosenstein that he wanted to do something that would go down in the record then would be historic. Simon thought a long distance roller skating trip might attract attention but it seemed too tiring inviting a news crew to follow him and his friends on a water skiing trip to South America and wa was another possibility but the logistics proved daunting hanging out in Harvard Square with Rosenstein one afternoon. Simon saw a Vespa motor scooter race by. I wonder if we could use one of those Simon Sars. He developed a plan to undertake a newsworthy trip, convincing two local dealerships to give him his friends discounts on Lambretta scooters, the top brand at the time, in exchange of the right of the film. Their trip, Simon's Rosen, Rosenshine and Mayer set out for South America, a trip they nicknamed Buenos Aires or Boost. The young men drove west through Illinois before heading south to Mexico. They traveled on country roads and slept on porches in abandoned police stations and in forests where they set up jungle hammocks with mosquito netting. A family in Mexico City warned the boys about the bandits and insisted they buy a gun for protection, teaching the young men to say a crucial phrase in Spanish, if you move, we will kill you, driving with noisy broken muffler through a small southern Mexican Town around dinner dinner time wearing leather jackets and looking like a motorcycle gang in Marlon Brando's classic film The Wild One. The boys stopped to find a place to eat when the locals saw visitors disturbing their traditional evening stroll. They turned furious. Gringo, what are you doing here? Someone called out. Within minutes, 50 hostile young men, same holding messages, surrounded Simons and his friends, pushing their back up against the wall. Rosen Shine reached for the gun but remembered it had only six bullets, not nearly enough to handle the swelling crowd. Only police 
officers emerged pushing through the throng to arrest the MIT students for disturbing the peace. The boys were thrown in jail soon. It was surrounded by a mob which screamed and whistled at them, causing such commotion that the mayor sent someone to investigate. The mayor heard that three college kids from Boston were causing trouble. He had then brought directly to his office. It turned out that the mayor had graduated from Harvard University and was eager to hear the latest news from Cambridge. Cambridge. Moments after fending off an angry mob, the mob, the boys sat down with local officials for a some sumptuous late night dinner. Simon and his friends made sure to get out of town before dawn, though to avoid additional trouble. Rosenshine had enough of the drama and headed home, but Simon and Mayor pushed on, making it to Bogota in seven weeks through Mexico, Guatemala, and Costa Rica overcoming mudslides and raging rivers along the way. They arrived with almost no food or money, thrilled to stay in the luxurious home for another classmate, Edmundo Esquinazi, a native of the city. Friends and family lined up to meet the visitors and they spent the rest of the summer playing corquet and relaxing with their boss, bosses. When, some, when Simons returned to MIT to begin his graduate studies, his advisor suggested he finish his PhD at the University of California, Berkeley. So he could work with a professor named Xing Shen Chen, a former math. Prodigy from China and a leading differential geometry and topologist Simons had some unfinished business to take care of, though he had begun dating a pretty peat, dark haired 18 year old named Barbara Blue Bluestein, who was in her first year at nearby Wellesley College. After four consecutive nights of intense conversation, they were enamored and engaged. We talked and talked and talked. Barbara recalls he was going to Berkeley and I wanted to join him. Barbara's parents were furious about the quickly silver relationship. Barbara was too young to bed with her mother and Instead, she also worried about a potential power imbalance between Barbara and her self-assured fiancé. Years later, he is going to wipe out the floor with you. She warned Barbara, determined to marry Simon despite with you. She warned Barbara, determined to marry Simon despite her parents' objections. Barbara negotiated a compromise. She'd go with him to Berkeley, but they had wait until her sophomore year to wait. Simon received a fellowship to study in Berkeley, arriving on campus in the late summer of 1959. He got an early and unhappy surprise. Chan was nowhere to be found. The professor had just left for a year-long sabbatical. Simon's began working with the other mathematicians, including Betra and Costrant, but he met first stations one night in early October. Simons visited Barbara's boarding house and told his research wasn't going well. She thought uh, he looked depressed. Let's get married. She calls telling him. She recalls telling him Simons was on board. They decided to go to Reno, Nevada, where they wouldn't have to wait days for a blood test as they required in California. The young couple had almost no money. Simon's roommate lent him enough to purchase two bus tickets for the 200-mile trip in Reno. Barbara persuaded the manager of a local bank to let her cash an out-of-state check so they could buy a marriage license. After a brief ceremony, Simon's used the remaining money to play poker, winning enough to buy his new bride a black bathing suit. <laughs> Back in Berkeley, I don't need that yet. Back in Berkeley, the couple hoped to, he to keep their wedding a secret at least until they figured out how to break the news to families. When Barbara's father wrote a letter saying he was planning a visit, they realized they, ha they have to own up Simon and his new bride wrote to their respective parents filling several pages with mundane news about school and classes before adding identical proscripts. By the way, we got married. Up speed, pakarte hain, dosto. After Barbara's parents cooled down, her father arranged for a local rabbi to marry the couple in the more traditional ceremony. The new leads uh, rented an uh, the new the newlyweds rented an apartment on Parker Street near a campus, buzzing with political activity. And Simon's made progress on a PhD dissertation focused on differential geometry, the study of curved multidimensional spaces using methods from calculus, topology, and linear algebra. Simon's also spent time on a new passion trading. The couple had received five thousand dollars. As a wedding gift, and Simons was eager to multiply the cash. He had did a bit of research and drove to a Merrill Lynch brokerage office in a nearby San Francisco, where he bought shares to United Fruit Company, which sold Tropical Fruit and Cleans Corporation and Chemical Company. The shares barely budgeted in price, frustrating Simons. This is kind of boring, he told the broker. Do you have anything more exciting? You should look at soya beans, he said. Simons knew nothing about commodities or how to trade futures. Financial contracts promising to 
द डिलीवरी ऑफ कमोडिटीज ऑफ अदर इन्वेस्टमेंट्स एट अ फिक्स प्राइस एट फ्यूचर डेट बट ही बिकेम एन ईगर स्टूडेंट एट द टाइम सो ए बीन सोल्ड फॉर टू डॉलर फिफ्टी फिफ्टी सेंट्स पर बुशल वैन द ब्रोकर सेट मेरिल लिंच एनालिस्ट एक्सपेक्टेड प्राइसिस टू गो थ्री डॉलर और इवन हायर साइमस आईज वाइड एंड ही बॉट यू टू फ्यूचर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स वॉट सो बीन सोर एंड स्कोर्ड सेवरल थाउजेंड डॉलर ऑफ प्रॉफिट इन अ मैटर ऑफ डेज साइमस वॉज उन्नीस पेज हुए हैं अभी तक तो बहुत दोस्तों लंबा चलना है आई वॉज फैसिनेटेड बाई द एक्शन एंड द पॉसिबिलिटी आई कुड मेक मनी शॉर्ट टर्म ही सेज an older friend urged simon to sell his holdings and pocket his profits warning that commodity prices are volatile simon disregarded the advice sure enough so a bean prices tumbled and simon barely broke even the roller coaster ride might even discourage some novice investors but it only wet simon's appetite he began getting up early to drive to san francisco so he could bet be at merrill lynch's offices By 7:30 a.m. in the time of opening of trading in Chicago for hours, he would stand and watch prices flash by on the big board, making trades while trying to keep up with the action. Even after heading home to resume resume studies, uh, Simon kept an eye on the markets. It was the kind of rush Simon recalls. It became too much though. Skipping into San Francisco at the crack of dawn while trying to complete a challenging thesis, proving proved taxing when Barbara became pre- pregnant. <laughs> There were too many balls of Simon's to juggle. Reluctantly, he put a, sto- a stop to his trading, but seed had been planted. For his doctoral thesis, Simon's wanted to develop a proof for a difficult, outstanding problem in the field, but constant doubted he could pull it off. World-class mathematicians had tried and failed. Constant told him. Don't waste your time. The skepticism seemed only to spur Simon's his re- his resulting thesis on the transit. Transitivity of holomeny systems completed in 1962. After just two years of work, dealt with the geometry of multi-dimensional curved spaces. When Simon speaks to novices, he likes to define holonomy as parallel transport of tangent tangent vectors around closed curves in multiple-dimensional curved spaces. Really, a respected journal accepted the thesis for publication, helping Simon win a prestigious three-year teaching position at MIT. Even as he made plans with Barbara to turn to Cambridge with with their baby Elizabeth Simon began to question his future the next few decades seemed laid main to soya ja raha hu chair par hi seemed laid out of him to nearly research teaching him more research and still more teaching Simon loved mathematics but he also needed new adventure new adventure he seemed to thrive on overcoming odds and defining skepticism and he didn't see obstacles on the horizon as just 23 simon was experiencing an existential crisis is this it am i going to do this my whole life he asked barbara one day at home there has be to be more after a year at mit simon's re- 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 restlessness got the better of him he returned to bogota to see if he could start a business with the colombian schoolmates esquinazzi and mayer recalling the pristine asphalt tile in his mit dormitory esquinazzi complained about the poor quality of material in bogota simon said he knew said he knew someone who made flooring so they decided to start a local factory to produce vinyl floor tile with pvc piping the financing mostly came from espinazzi father in law victor shaywai but simon and his father also took small stakes the business seemed in good hands and simon didn't feel he had much to contribute so he returned to academia accepting a research position at harvard in 1963 there he taught two classes including an advanced graduate course on uh, partial differential equations an area within geometry he anticipated would become important simon didn't know much about partial differential equations but he figured teaching the course was a good way to learn Simon told his students he was learning the topic just a week or so before they were a uh, confession they found amusing Simon was a popular professor with an informal enthusiastic style he cracked jokes and nearly wore a jacket or tie the outfit of choice among many faculty members his jovial exterior was pouty precious however simon's research was going slowly and he didn't enjoy the harvard community he had borrowed the money to invest in the floor tile factory as kunadzi community 
uh, and the others were building and he had persuaded his parents to mortgage their home for their own share of deal to pad his income simons began uh, teaching two additional courses at nearby cambridge junior college work that added to his stress though he kept it secret from his friends and family Simons was hustling for money but it wasn't simply to pay off his debts he hungered for true wealth Simons liked to buy nice things but he wasn't extravagant nor did he feel pressure from Barbara who still sometimes wore items of clothing for from her high school days other motivations seemed to be driving Simons friends and other sus- suspected he wanted to have some kind of impact on the world simon saw how wealth can grant independence and influence jim understood at an early age that money is power barbara says he didn't want people to have power over him as he sat in harvard library his earlier career doubts resurfaced simon wondered if another kid if another kind of job might bring more fulfillment and excitement and perhaps some wealth at least enough to pay off his debts the mounting pressures finally got to simon he decided to make a break Chapter one, Khatam. Chapter two. Question: What's the difference between a PhD in mathematics and a large pizza? A large pizza can feed a family of four. Oh, we are. In nineteen sixty-four, Simon quit Harvard, Harvard University to join an intelligence group helping to fight the ongoing Cold War. In Cold War with the Soviet Union, the group told Simon he could continue his mathematics research as he worked on the government assignments. Just as importantly, doubled his previous salary and began paying off his debt. Simon's offer came from the Princeton, New Jersey division of the Institute of Business Analysis and Elite Research Organization that hired mathematicians from top universities, such as the National Security Agency, the United States' largest and most secretive intelligence agency, in detecting and attacking Russian codes and ciphers. Simon joined during. Uh, tumultuous period of the idea high level soviet codes hadn't been cracked on a regular basis in more than a decade simon and his colleagues at the ids communications research division were tasked with security us communications shit 12 baj gaye communications and making sense of Uh, stub- stubbornly imperable Soviet code. The idea taught Simon how to develop mathematical co- uh, models to discern and interpret patterns and seemingly meaningless data. He began using statistical analysis and probability theory, mathematical tools that would influence his work to break code. Simon would first determine a plan of attack, then he had created an algorithm, a series of steps of his computer to follow to test and implement his strategy. Simon was awful at designing computer programs, forcing him to rely on the divisions and house programmers for the actual coding he honed other skills that would prove valuable later in his career i learned like i like to make algorithms and testing things out on computer simons later said early on simons helped developed an ultra fast code breaking algorithm solving a long standing problem in the group soon thereafter intelligence experts in washington discovered an isolated instance in which the soviets sent a coded message with an incorrect setting simon sent two colleagues seized on the glitch which provided rare insight into the internal construction of the enemy system and help devise ways to exploit it the advances made simon simon says luding star and earned the team to trip to washington dc to accept the personal thanks from defense department officials the only problem with his new job simon couldn't share his accomplishment with anyone outside the organization members of the group classified the idea's work was itself classified what did you do today barbara would ask when simon's came home from work <laughs> or oh, the usual late reply before long barbara gave up asking simon's was struck by the unique way ta- talented researchers were recruited and managed in his unit staff members most of the whom had doctorates were hired for their brain power creativity and ambition rather than for any specific expertise or background the assumption was that researchers would find problems to work on and be clever enough to solve them lenny baum among the most accomplished code breakers developed a saying that became the group's credo bad ideas is good good ideas is terrific and no ideas is terrible <laughs> must tayari it was an idea factory says lee new with the division deputy director whose daughter baby later became a broadway and television star researchers couldn't discuss their work with those outside the organization internally however the division was structured to breed an unusual degree of openness and co- co- collegiality 
most of the 25 or so employees all the mathematicians and engineers were given the same title technical staff member the team routinely shared credit and met of the champagne toast after discovering solutions to uh, particularly thorny problems most days researchers wandered into one another's offices to offer assistance or lend an honor uh, an ear an ear uh, when staffers met each day for afternoon tea they discussed the news played chess worked on puzzles or competed at go the complicated chinese board game simon and his wife threw regular dinner parties at which ida staffers became inebriated on barbara's rum heavy fish house punch the group played high stakes poker matches that lasted until lasted until the new next morning with simons often walking away with fistfuls of his colleagues cash one evening the gang came over but simons was nowhere to be found jim was arrested barbara told the group simons had dragged up so many parking tickets on his beat up cadillac and had ignored so many of the resulting some uh, some uh, that the police threw him in jail the mathematicians piled into a few cars drove to the police station and chipped into bail simon out. the idea was filled with unconventional thinkers and outsized personalities out large room hosted a dozen so personal computers for the staff uh, one morning a guard discovered a cryptologist in the room wearing a bathrobe and nothing more he had been thrown out of his room and had been living in the computer room and the time late at night someone noticed the staffer typing away on the keyboard what was shocking was that the employee was typing with his bare smelly toes as than his fingers his fingers were bad enough they would say it was really disgusting people was furious paron ki unhi se likha tha pagal Even as Simons and his colleagues were uncovering Soviet secrets, Simons was nurturing one of his own. Computing power was becoming more advanced, but the security firms were slow to embrace the new technologies, continuing to rely on card sorting methods for accounting the other areas. Simons decided to start at start a company to electronically trade and research stocks, a concept with the potential to revolutionize the industry. Twenty-eight year old Simons shared the idea with his boss, Dick Labor. as well as the ideas best programmer they both agreed to join his company to be named i star accustomed to top secret schemes their group worked uh, surreptitiously on the company one day the neurit got wind up wind of the plot upset that upset that the pending departures would gut the group neurit stormed into labor's office why are you guys leaving how did you find out labor responded who else knows everyone you guys left the last state of your business plan on the xerox machine the strategy was more maxwell smart uh, smart than james bond it turned out in the end simons failed to raise enough money to get the business off the ground eventually dropping the idea i didn't feel like much of the setback because simons was finally making the progress in his research on minimal varieties of the subfield of differential geometry that had long captivated him differential equations which were the used in the physics biology and finance sociology and many other fields describe the derivatives of mathematical quantities or their relative rates of change as a newton famous f- uh, physics equation the net force on an object is equal to its mass time its acceleration it is a differential equation because acceleration is a second uh, derivative With respect to time equations involving derivatives with respect to time and space are examples of partial differential equations and can be used to describe elasticity heat and sound among other things an important application of pde to geometry is in the theory of minimal varieties which had been the focus of simon's research since his first semester as an in mit instructor mera gala dard kar raha hai a classic illustration in the field concerns the surface form formed by a soap film stretching across a wire frame that has been dipped in a soap solution and lifted out such a surface as minimal area compared with any other surface with the same wire frame as its boundary experimenting with soap films in the 19th century belgian physicist joseph platou has whether such surface with minimal areas always exist and whether they are so smooth that every point look alike no matter how complicated or twisted the wire frame the answer to what became known as platu problem was yes at least for ordinary two dimensional surfaces as proved by new york mathematician in 1930 simons wanted to know if the same would be true for minimal surfaces 
in higher dimensions something geometers called minimal varieties mathematicians who focused on theoretical questions often immerse themselves in their work walking sleeping even dreaming about problems for years on end with those with no exposure to this kind of mathematics which can be described as abstract or pure are liable to dismiss it as pointless simons wasn't merely solving equations like a high school student however he was hoping to discover and codify universal principles rules and truths with the goal of furthering and understanding of these mathematical objects albert einstein argued that there is natural order in the world mathematicians like simons can be seen as searching for evidence of that structure that is true beauty of their work especially when it succeeds in revealing something that the universe's natural order often such theories find practical applications even many years later while advancing our knowledge of the universe eventually a series of conversations with frederick almagren junior a professor at nearby princeton princeton university who had solved the problem in three dimensions helped simons achieve a breakthrough simons created a partial differential equation of his own which became known as the simons equation and used it to develop a uniform solution through six dimensions he also proposed a counter example in dimension 7 later three italian including fields medal medal winner enrico barbieri showed out the counter example to be correct wow yaar in 1968 Simons published minimal varieties in Riemannian manifolds which became a foundation paper for geometers proved crucial in related fields and continues to garner citations and its scoring and enduring significance these achievements helped establish Simons as one of the world's preeminent geometers he got out of even as Simons realized success in code breaking and mathematician mathematics he kept searching for new ways to make money the idea granted its researchers a remarkable amount of flexibility in their work so simon spent time examining the stock market working with baum and two other colleagues simon developed a new fangled stock trading system the core it published in an internal classified paper for the idea called probabilistic models for an Uh, prediction of stock market behavior that proposed a method of trading that the researchers claimed could generate annual gains of at least 50% Simons and his colleagues in, in ignored the basic information that most investors focus on such as earnings dividends and corporate news what the code breakers uh, termed that fundamental economic statistics of the market instead of instead they proposed ser- searching for small number of macroscopic var- uh, variables capable of predicting the market's short term behavior they Persist, uh, posited that the market had and many as eight underlying states such as high variance when stocks experienced larger than average moves and good when shares generally rose here's what was really unique the paper didn't try to identify or predict these states using economic theory or other conventional methods or did the researchers seek to address why the market entered certain states Simons and his colleagues used mathematics to determine the set of states best fitting the observed pricing data. Their model then made its best accordingly. The why's didn't matter. Simons and his colleagues seemed to suggest just the strategies to take advantage of the interfered states. For the majority of investors, this was an unheard of approach, but gamblers would have understood it well. Poker players summarize the mood of their opponents by judging their behavior and ju- adjusting their strategies accordingly facing off against <sighs> facing off against someone in a miserable mood calls for certain tactics rather than optimal if a competitor seems overjoyed and overconfident players don't need to no why their opponent is glum or exuberant to profit from their moods they just have to identify the moods themselves simons and the code breakers proposed a similar approach to predicting stock prices relying on sophisticated mathematical tool called a hidden markov model just as a gambler might guess an opponent's mood based on his or her decisions as investors might deduce a market state from its price movement simon's paper was crude even for the late 1960s he and his colleagues made some naive assumptions such as that traders could be made under ideal conditions which included no trading costs even though the model required heavy daily trading still the paper can be seen as something of a trailblazer until then investors generally sought an underlying economic rational to explain and predict stock moves 
or they used simple technical analysis which involved uh, employing graphs or other representations of past price movements to discover repeatable patterns simons and his colleagues were proposing a third approach on that similarities with technical trading but was much more sophisticated and reliant on tools of math and science they were suggesting that one could deduce a range of signals capable of conveying a useful information about expected market moves mujhe pyaas lag rahi hai bahut tez lekin main piyunga nahi i will not drink Simon and his colleagues weren't alone in suggesting that stock prices are set by a complex process with many inputs including some that are hard or even impossible to pin down and not necessarily related to traditional fundamental factors around time Harry Markowitz the University of Chicago Nobel laureate and father of modern portfolio theory was searching for anomalies in securities prices as was mathematician edward thorp thorp would attempt an early form of computerized trading gaining a head start on simons stay tuned for more dearly reader simons was part of this vanguard and he and his colleagues were arguing that it was important to understand all the underlying levers of the markets machine but to find a mathematical system that matched them well enough to generate consistent profits a view that would inform simon's approach to trading years later their model foreshadowed revolutions in finance including factors investing investing the use of models based on the uh, on observable states and other forms of quantitative investing that would sweep the investing world decade leader by 1967 simon was thriving at the idea he was matching wits with russians making progress and his maths researching research learning on how to manage big brains and gaining a better understanding of the power of computation his ability to identify the most promising idea of his colleagues was especially distinctive he was a terrific listener knew it says it's one thing to have good ideas it's another recognized when others do if there was a pony in your pile of horse manure he would find it by then labeler had begun discussing retirement and simons was in line to become the division's deputy director a bump in salary increase prestige seemed within reach the vietnam war changed everything the fall protests cropped up around the country including on the campus of princeton university few princeton students realized the division supporting the nsa with uh, was in their near neighborhood until an article until an article appeared in the school newspaper the daily prince Princetonian alerting the community to the fact Simons and his colleagues were doing work related related to the war and many of them vehemently against the effort the summer when Jim and Barbara daughter Liz went to sleep away camp her friends received package and candy from their parents Liz got peace necklace the code breakers and happiness with the war didn't stop Princeton students from launching series of protests including a student blocking the ideas entrance at one point the building was trashed newrit's car was pelted with eggs and he was called a baby killer as debate about the war heated up across the country the new york times published an opinion piece by general maxwell detailed as the cover story of its sunday magazine in the peace general terror the decorated war veteran who had served as chairman of the joint chief of staff and had convinced president john f kennedy to send combat troops to the region made forceful argument that the united states was winning the war and that the nation would rely, rally around the effort and was too much for simon who didn't want readers to be left with an impression that all the idea employees backed the war who wrote a six paragraph letter to the paper arguing that there were better use of the nation's resources than conducting war in vietnam it would make a stronger country to rebuild wats than it would to ha- bomb hanoi simon wrote it would make us stronger to construct decent transportation on our east coast that than it would destroy all the bridges in vietnam 31 pages hone abhi tak to After the newspaper published the letter Simons was rather pleased with himself. Main aapko ye book dikha deta hu himself. Phone mera pura garam ho gaya himself he didn't get much reaction from colleagues and figured Taylor apna muh nahi chupaunga main 
मैं थक गया हूँ बहुत ट्रेलर वॉज फाइन विद लिटिल डिफरेंस ऑफ ओपिनियन बिट लेटर एज स्ट्रेंजर फॉर न्यूज़ वीक वर्किंग ऑन द आर्टिकल अबाउट डिफेंस डिपार्टमेंट एम्प्लॉयज एम्प्लॉयज अपोज टू द वॉर कॉन्टैक्टेड साइमन आस्किंग हाउ दे हैंडल देयर कॉल्स चार्ज कितना है मेरे फ़ोन में चार्ज भी कम है अभी चार्ज से हटा देता हूँ पता क्या हो तीस पेज में मैंने एक घंटा ले लिया आइए देखते हैं और कितना समय लगता है A bit later, after the newspaper published the letters, the letter Simmons was rather pleased with himself. He didn't get much reaction from colleagues and figured Taylor was fine with a little difference of opinion. A bit later, a stringer for Newsweek, working on an article about Defense Department employees opposed to the war, contacted Simmons asking how they handled their calls. Simmons said he and his colleagues generally worked on personal projects half the time. while spending the rest of the time on government projects since he opposed the war simon said he had decided to devote all his time to his own mathematics research until he fighting until the fighting ended and then he had only do defense department work to even things out in truth simon hadn't formally established any kind of clean break from defense work it was personal goal when he when he probably should have शेयर्ड विद द पब्लिक मुझे ए सी चलाने जाना है इसलिए मैं अब मैं इस माइक को खोलता हूँ फिर जब खोलूँगा तब धीरे धीरे जाऊँगा तब तक पढ़ते रहता हूँ आई वॉज ट्वेंटी लाइन साइमन एक्सप्लेन नो वन हैड एवर आज टू इंटरव्यू मी एंड आई वॉज द वाइज गाय साइमन स्टोर लेबलर अबाउट द इंटरव्यू एंड लाइबर गेव टेलर एड्स अप अबाउट द फोर्थ कमिंग न्यूज़ लेटर आर्टिकल अ शॉर्ट वाइल लेटर लेबलर रिटर्न विद सम डिस्टर्बिंग न्यूज़ यू आर फायर्ड He said, "What? You can't fire me." Simon responded, "I am a permanent member, Jim. The only difference between a perm- permanent member and temporary member is temporary member has a contract." Labor said, "You don't." Simon came home in the middle of the day, shell shocked. Three days later, President Lyndon Johnson announced the halting of U.S. bombing missions, a sign the war effort was coming to an end. Simon figured the news meant he couldn't claim his job. Labor told him not to bother coming in. By then, Simon had three young childs. He had little idea what he was going to do next. What he was going to do next? Okay. Abhi se chalaya maine. What he was going to do next? Huh? He wasn't quite sure how the Simon's minimal varieties paper was gaining attention, and he fielded offers from some schools as well as companies, including IBM. He told Anand Charal, Charlap. a friend and fellow mathematician that teaching uh, <coughs> mathematics seemed too dull simon said he might join an investment bank to sell convertible bonds when charlap said he didn't know what convertible bonds were simon launched into a long description charlap charlap was disappointed in his friend simon was one of the world's premier young mathematic Tishans, not someone meant to hawk Wall Street's latest product. That's ridiculous, Charles said. What's your ideal job? Simon confessed that he had preferred to chair a large math department, but he was too young and he didn't know the right people. Charles said that he had an idea. A bit later, a letter arrived from Simon from John Tall, president of Sunny Stony Book, a uh, Brook, a public university. On Long Island, about 60 miles from New York City, the school had spent five hours researching for some to lead to its math department. To the extent that the school had a reputation, it was for having a problem with drug use on campus. The only thing we heard was there were some drug raids there. Barbara says the troll was determined to change things. A physicist who had been re- Recruited by New York Governor uh, Nelson Rockefeller, Toll was leading a hundred-dollar million government-funded drive to turn the school into the Berkeley of the East. Oh. He already had recruited Nobel Prize-winning physicist Chen Ning Yang and was now focusing on revitalizing his math department. Toll offered Simon the position of chairman, dangling the chance to be his own. Boss and build the department as he wished. I wanted Simon told Tall. 
In 1968, the age of 30, Simon moved his family to Long Island where he began charming recruits and building a department early on Simon's. I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun. Oh shit, it's more than 300 and I have done only 34. <coughs> targeted a Cornell University mathematician named James Axe who a year earlier had won the prestigious Cole Prize in Number Theory. Axe who a year earlier had won the prestigious Cole Prize in Number Theory. seemed unlikely a bold to Ivy League powerhouse for an unhurdled school like Stony Brook. He had wife, a young son and a bright future at Cornell. But Simon's and Axe had an had been friendly as graduate. Simon's at Berkeley and they stayed in touch, giving Simon some hope as he became as he and Barbara drove five hours northwest with Ithaca, New York to meet with the younger mathematician Simon Wood Axe promising him a major salary increase. Later he and Barbara hosted Axe and his family in Stony Brook where Simon drove his guests to West Midway Mid 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 Beach in nearby Brookhaven on Long Island Sound hoping his pictures sweet views might sway them. Back in Ithaca, Axe and his wife, also named Barbara, received a care packages for Simon's packed with pebbles and other reminders of Tony Brooks' more temperature climate was surdarth kar raha yaar! Ah. Axe took his time, deliberately frustrating Simon's. One day, Simon's walked into his Tony Brook office in a tennis outfit flung his racket to the ground and told a colleague if this job requires any more as licking I am out of here this entreaty speed paid off though Axe became the first brand name academic to join Stony Brook he really wore us down with, the, with his little tricks Barbara Axe says Axe's decision sent a message that Simon meant business as he raided other schools Simon re refined his pitch focusing on what it might take to lure specific mathematicians who those who valued money got raises those focused on personal researches got lighter class loads extra leave generous research support and help evading irritating administrative requirements jim i told i don't want to be an a committee one potential hire told him how about the library committee simon said it's a committee of one Curting accomplished candidate, Simon developed a unique perspective on talent. He told one Stony Brook professor, Herschel Fracas, that her va he valued killers, those with single-minded focus who wouldn't quit on a math problem until arriving at a solution. Simon told another colleague that some academics were super smart, yet weren't original thinkers worthy of a position. At the university, there were guys and there and are real guys, he said. Simon's work to create a uh, collegial collegial uh, shit Kho gaya. Simon's work to create a collegial stimulating environment just as he had enjoyed at the idea to keep his academics happy. Simon kept teaching loads at reasonable levels and invited co invited colleagues to join him and Barbara on their newly purchased 23-foot boat docked on Long Island Sound. Unlike some top-flight academics, Simon re relished interacting with colleagues. He had wandered into a professor's office, asking what projects he was working on and how he could be helpful, much like he had at the IBA. <sighs> Feeling refreshed. It's unusual for someone to think of the well-being of colleagues, Farkas says. Simons put mathematicians and students at ease, dressing more inform informally than others at the school. He rarely wore socks even in the frigid New York, New York winters, a practice he would continue into his 80s. I just decided to take too much of my time to put them on. Simon says, Simons and Barbara hosted weekly parties at which the academics, artists and 
left leaning intellectuals removed their shoes and mingled on the Simon's white shack carpet enjoying drinks and chatting about politics and other topics of the day Simon's made mistakes including letting future Mifid medal winner Xing Tuang Yao got away after the young geometer demanded tenure but he assembled one of the world's top cent centers of geometry hiring 20 mathematicians while learning to identify the nation's best minds and how to recruit and manage them as simon's department expanded his personal life came uh, unglued simon's charisma attracted a range of students to his office at all hours, he was receiving acclaim for his, from his minimal varieties work and enjoying the power of his chairmanship amid a period in his sexual norms and restraints were rapidly loosening a best-selling book of the time open marriage encouraged spouses to strip marriage of his antiquated ideals and explore sexual relationships outside the wedlock at the same time the women's liberation movement encouraged women Encouraged women to discard the perceived shackles of society, including the conservative dress and even monogamy. There seemed to be the contest among the secretaries as to who could wear the shortest skirt. He calls Char Charlab the Stony Brook professor. Samus was 33 years old and feeling restless once again. Rumors emerged of an extramarital dalliance with the department's attractive secretary at least. Simon made a crude joke about a female academic surprising his colleagues. At the time, Barbara felt overshadowed by her husband's accomplishments and was frustrated that early marriage and motherhood had stand her own academic career. Barbara was smart and ambitious. She had <laughs> married at 18 and had a daughter at 19. I felt like trapped, she says. One day, Simon had heard Barbara was conducted a relationship with a younger colleague whom Simons had recruited and mentored. Simons was shaken at a dinner party when someone asked why Simons was so upset. Nothing that Jim Chandler hadn't been ideal and he didn't seem especially committed to her. Drunken Simons slapped, slammed his hand against the wall. A colleague recalls Simons decided to take a sabbatical year at the University of California, Los Angeles, so he could undergo primal therapy, which was emerging as something of a cultural phenomenon the approach involved screaming or otherwise articular repressed pain primarily as a newborn emerging from a womb so also sometimes work of screaming at night was interrupted by the approach after a few weeks of therapy simon had second thoughts when his instructor suggests he might make more progress if he used marijuana. Simon decided to bold. Oh, it seems like a hoax, he thought. Simon moved back to the East Coast, spending the year of the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. His marriage with Barbara couldn't be salvaged and they eventually divorced. Barbara would head to USC Berkeley where she completed a PhD in Computer Science in 1981. In her dissertation, di uh, Barbara solved an open problem in theoretical computer science. She would join IBM as a researcher and become president of ASIM, the largest educational scientific computing society. Later, Barbara emerged as a national expert of the security problems of computerized voting, demonstrating an interest in technology and addressing broader societal challenges that Simons would share. We just married too young, Barbara says. My parents were right. Back on Long Island, this time on his own, Simon searched for live in Nanny to lend a hand. His three children were with him. One day, he interviewed Marlene Horace, a pretty 22-year-old blonde who later became a graduate student in economics at Stony Brook. Shortly after employing Marlene, Simons asked her on a date for a while. The relationship was off and off. Eventually, Marlene left to become a nanny for James. Axe's uh, children helping out as Axe and his wife went through a painful divorce. Marlene lived with Barbara Axe and her two sons Kevin and Brian playing late night games of Scrabble with the family, cooking a mean mac and cheese and providing a shoulder for the kids to cry on. Marlene was a godsend to all of us because Axe's son, Brian Keating over time and Jim Marlene forged a romantic bond. Marlene made Progress on and PhD in the economics. Why are you wearing my clothes? While Simons enjoyed a breakthrough with the Shing Chen Chen, the professor he had followed to UC Berkeley, only to realize he was on leave. On his own, Simons made a discovery. <laughs> 
and later to quantifying shapes in curved three dimensional spaces he showed his work to chan who realized the inside could be extended to all dimensions in 1974 chan and simons published characteristics forms and geometric invariants a paper that introduced chan simons invariants and invariant is the property that remains unchanged even while undergoing particular kinds of transformations which proved useful in the various areas of mathematics in 1976 at the age of 37 simons was awarded the mathemat american mathematical society's oswald Webblen Prize in Geometry, the highest honor in the field. For his work in the churn and his earlier research in minimal varieties, a decade later, theoretical physicist Edward Newton and uh, others would discover that Churn-Simons theory had applications to a range of areas in physics, physics including uh, condensed matter, string theory, and uh, supergravity. It even became crucial to methods using used by Microsoft and others in their attempts to develop a quantum computers capable of solving problems vexing modern computers such as drug development and artificial intelligence by 2019 tens of thousands of uh, <laughs> citations in academic papers approximately 3 day a 3 day reference to churn simons theory commenting simons position in the upper echelon of mathematics and physics dosto 38 page ho chuke hain और एक घंटा चौबीस मिनट हो चुका है साइमस हैड रीज अ पेनिकल ऑफ इस प्रोफेशन जस्ट एज क्विकली ही ड्रिफ्टेड फ्रॉम मैथमेटिक्स रेस्पेक्ट फॉर अ न्यू सबमिट टू एसेंड इन 1974 द फ्लोर टाइल कंपनी साइमस हैड स्टार्टेड विथ हिस फ्रेंड्स एडमंडो एस्क्वेजो एस्क्वेजो एंड जिमी मेयर सोल्ड अ फिफ्टी स्टेक and delivering profits to साइमन एंड टू द अदर ओनर साइमस रिकमेंडेड द एस्कुनाजी Oh. Mayer and Victor Shaw I invested invested their money with Charlie Fredild who had taken a course with Simons and Harvard and offshore to trust Shaw I and established for Simon also placed money with Fryfield Fryfield employed a different strategy from most he built uh, econometric models to forecast ah oh. To forecast, Fred Field employed a different strategy. For most, he built econometric models to forecast the prices of commodities, including sugar, using economic and other data as his inputs. If crop production fell, for example, Fred Field model computed the price risk that likely would result an early form of quantitative invest investing. Fred Field tactics paid off as sugar prices nearly doubled. The value of the group group's partnership soared tenfold to six million. Some of the investors reacted in unexpected ways to shocking windfall. I'm getting mad. Hey, get up, just mad. I'm getting mad. Oof. Abel Jeffrey uh, depressed says Mayor Simon's friend from Columbia we had made all this money but there was no socially redeeming value in what we were doing Simon's had a very different response the rapid fire gains got his speculative juices flowing once more reminding him of the rush trading could bring Fred Field <laughs> Style even shared some similarities to the math-based trading system described by Simons and his colleagues in their parents at the IDA. He thought using models to trade with an idea that helped promise. Jim caught the bug. Mayer says, despite his recent acclaim, Simons needed a break from mathematics. मेरे से नहीं रहा था तो बिना पानी के. Ah! Holy shit! Despite his recent acclaim Simon needed a break from mathematics he and Jeff Shiger a protege who was emerging as a star in the field of geometry had been trying to show that certain geometrically defined numbers such as pi are irrational in almost every case they weren't weren't uh, defined numbers such as pi are irrational in almost every case they weren't getting anywhere and were growing frustrated even hopeless there was bigger game there and we weren't able to get it simon says it was driving me crazy simon was also dealing with the confusion in his personal life he was growing closer to malin but was still pained by the breakup of his marriage bhaiya dikkat hai shaadi mat karo janjat jhel rahe hain bhaiya hamare After four years of dating, Simon's co- confided to a friend that he was co- contemplating to a pro- proposing marriage, but was unsure about getting back into a serious relationship. एक सताई हो रहा है, 
ये पूरा चैप्टर खत्म करेंगे हम लोग वन थर्टी तक आई हैव मेड दिस वोमेन शी इज रियली स्पेशल ही टोल्ड अ फ्रेंड आई डोंट नो वॉट आई एम गोइंग टू डू जिम एन मार एन मैरिड बट ही कंटिन्यूड पॉन्ड्रिंग हिज लाइफ डायरेक्शन साइमन रेड्यूज हिज ऑब्लिकेशन एट टोनी एट स्टोनी ब्रुक टू स्पेंड हाफ हाफ ऑफ हिज टाइम ट्रेडिंग करेंसीज फॉर अ फंड इस्टेब्लिश बाई शाय बाई नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सेवन साइमन वॉज कन्वेज करेंसी मार्केट्स वर राइप फॉर प्रॉफिट वर्ल्ड करेंसी हैड बिगन टू फ्लोट मूविंग फ्रीली विदाउट रिगार्ड टू द प्राइस ऑफ गोल्ड एंड द ब्रिटिश पाउंड हैड टम्बल्ड इट सीम्ड टू साइमन दैट अ न्यू वर्टाइल एरा हैड बिगन इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी एट साइमन लेफ्ट अकेडमी एड स्टार्ट हिज ओन इन्वेस्टमेंट फर्म focusing on currency trading simon's father told him he was making a big mistake giving up a 10 ten- tenured position mathematicians were even more shocked until then most had only a vague awareness that simon's had outside interests the idea that he might leave to play the market full time was co-founding mathematicians generally have a complicated relationship with money they appreciate the value of wealth uh, but many see the pursuit of uh, lu- lu- lucre as a l- lonely distraction from their noble calling academics wouldn't say it to simon directly but some were convinced he was squandering rare talent we looked down on him like he had been corrupted he had sold his soul to the devil says rini karmara who taught at cornell at the time simons had never completely fit into the world of academia though he loved geometry and appreciated the beauty of mathematics but his passion for money curiosity about the business world and need for new adventures set him apart I have always felt like something for uh, of an outsider no matter what I was doing he later would say I was Im- immersed in mathematics but I never felt quite like a member of the mathematics community I always had a foot outside the world Simon had been star cryptologist and had scaled the heights of mathematics and had built a world class math department all the age of 40 he was confident he could conquer the world of trading investors had spent centuries trying to master markets really fun finding huge success once again uh, then dieter simon the uh, challenges seemed to spark enthusiasm he really wanted to do unusual things things uh, than think possible his friend jo R- roshin say simon would find it harder than he expected yes finally pe exactly usi time pe maine kiya yaar oh shit ab hamara chapter 3 shuru hota hai Getting fired can be good thing. You just don't want to make it a habit of it. बात तो सही है यार Weeks after leaving Stony Brook University expansive tree lined campus in the early summer of 1978 Simon found himself just a few miles down the road yet a world away Simon sat in the storefront office in the back of the dreary strip mall he was next to women clothing boutique two doors down from a pizza joint and across from the tiny one one story stony brook train station his space built for a retail establishment had beige wallpaper a single computer terminal and spotty phone service from his window simon could barely see the apply named sheep pasture road and indication of the how quickly he had gone from broadly admired to entirely obscure the odds weren't in favor of 40 year old mathematician working on his fourth career hoping to revolutionize the centuries old worth of investing indeed simon sir appeared to closer to retirement than any sort of historic breakthrough his growing hair was long and stringy almost to his shoulders a slight patch made him look even more like a aging professor our one step with modern finance until then simons had made him look even until simons had kaha gaya dabbled in the investing investing but hadn't demonstrated any special talent Sure the stake Simon and his father had in Charlie Fairfield's investment partnership had grown to about a million dollar after Fairfield correctly anticipated a surge in sugar pricing but disaster had barely been averted just weeks after Fairfield dumped the group's holding sugar prices had plum- plummeted neither Fairfield nor Simon had anticipated the fall they had simply agreed to cash out if they ever scored a substantial profit it was incredible simon says it was completely lucky completely lucky 
somehow Simon was bursting with self confidence he had conquered mathematics figured out code breaking and w- built a world class university department now he was sure he could master financial speculation partly because he had developed a special insight into how financial markets operated some investors and academics saw the market zigzags as uh, random arguing than all possible information was already baked into prices so only news which is impossible to predict could push prices highest or lowest others believed that prices shift reflected efforts by investors by investors to react to and predict economic and corporate news efforts and sometimes bor fruit simons came from a different world and enjoyed unique perspective he was accustomed and scrutinizing large data sets and detecting order where other saw randomness scientists and mathematicians are trained to dig below the surface of the chaotic natural world to search for an unexpected simplicity structure and even beauty the emerging patterns and regulatories are what constitute the laws of science just as we just pour over the vast quantities of data and build elegant models to identify laws in nature simons would build mathematical models to identify order in financial markets his approach bore similarities to the strategy he had developed years earlier in the institute of defense analysis and when he and his colleagues wrote the research paper that determined that markets existed in various hidden states that could be identified with the mathematical models now simons would tell the approach in real life there must some way to model this he thought simons named his institute investment company monometrix combining the word money and economic tricks to indicate that he would use math to analyze financial data and score trading giants at the idea simons had built computer models to spot signal hidden in the noise of the communications of the united states enemies at stony brook he had identified courted and managed the talented mathematicians now simons would hire a team of big brains to pour through the market data to identify trends and develop mathematical formulas to profit from them simons was unsure where to start all he knew was that currency markets had become unshackled presenting profit potential he did have an ideal partner in mind for his fledging firm leonard baum and one of the co-authors of the id research paper and the mathematician who had spent time discerning in the states and making short term prediction in chaotic environments simon just had to convince baum to risk his career and simon's radical unproven approach are bhaiya 46 page pe hu abhi Lenny Baum was born in 1931 the son of immigrants who had fled Russia for Brooklyn to escape rampant poverty and anti-semitism at the age of 13 Lenny's father Morris began work on the floor of a hat factory and eventually became the manager and owner as a teenager Lenny was 6 feet tall with a barrel chest his high school top sprinter and a member of its tennis team though his delicate hands suggested some one more comfortable running the pages of a textbook than competing on a court one day while visiting the nearby brighton beach with friends lenny spotted a vivacious and attractive young woman chatting with friends julia liverman and come with her family to the united states at the age of 5 from a small village in skejola vaskia wahi mujhe nahi pata kaun si jagah hai she she shows slovakia clutching her favorite doll as they escaped the nazis on the last boat from europe in 1941 once in new york julia's father louis spent months unsuccessfully searching for a job discouraged he decided to show up at a local factory and try to blend in with workers louis proved such a tireless laborer that he was added to the payroll later louis operated a laundromat in the family's small row house but the liberman family would always struggle financially mujhe lag raha hai camera band ho jayega bhai band mat ho na please lenny and julia fell in love and eventually married and moved to boston where lenny attended the harvard university graduating in 1953 and 
then earning a PhD in mathematics, Yulia finished fourth in her class at Boston University before obtaining a Master of Arts in Education and History at Harvard after joining the IDA in Princeton. Baum was even more successful, breaking code that Simons receiving credit for some of the unit's most important and still classified achievements. Lenny and some others were definitely higher than Jim in what we in management used to call live boot order, Lee knew it says. A hidden Markov process is one in which the chain of events is governed by unknown underlying parameters or variables. One sees the results of the chain but not the states that help explain the progression of the chain. Not Those not acquainted with baseball might throw their hands up when receiving updates of the number of the runs scored each inning. One run in this inning six in other with no obvious pattern or explanation some investors like financial market speech recognition patterns and other complex chains of event hidden markov models the baum welch algorithm provided a way to estimate probabilities and parameters within these complex sequences with with little more information than the output processes for the baseball game the baum welch algorithm might enable even someone with no understanding of the sport to guess the game situation that produces scores if there was a sudden jump from two runs or to five runs for example baum welch might suggest the probability that a three run home run had just been hit rather than a bases loaded triple the algorithm would allow someone to infer a sense of the sports rule and distribution of scores the baum welch algorithm gets you closer to the final answers by giving you better probabilities welch explains baum usually minimizes the importance of his accomplishment today thought baum's algorithm which allows a computer to teach itself states and probabilities it's seen as one of the 20th century notable advances in machine learning Paving the way for breakthroughs affecting the lives of millions in fields from genomics to weather prediction, Baum Welch enabled the first effective speech recognition system and even Google search engine. For all the acclaim, Baum Welch brought Lenny Baum. Most of the hundreds of other papers he wrote were classified, which grated on Julia. She became to believe her husband was getting neither the recognition nor the pay he deserved. The Baum Children had little idea what their father was up to. The few times they asked, he told them he worked as a classified bomb. Did they tell them that he wasn't working on? We are making bombs. He reassured his daughter Stiffy one day as controversy about the Vietnam War flared. Unlike Simon's, Baum was a homebody who spent little time socializing, playing poker or interacting with others. Most evening he sat quietly on a fox leopard skin couch in the family's modest Princeton home scribbling on a yellow pad with a pencil and bomb ran and bomb ran into a particularly challenging problem he had stopped gaze far into the distance and ponder bomb fit the stereotype of an absent-minded professor once he came to work with half a beard explaining that he had become distracted thinking about mathematics by saving shaving during his tenure at the IDA, Baum had noticed his eyesight deteriorating. Doctors eventually determined he suffered from cone road dystrophy, a disorder affecting the cone cells on the retina. A disorder affecting the cone cells on the retina, Baum found it difficult to engage in activities requiring visual clarity such as tennis once at the net a ball hit bomb square in the head the same thing happened in the ping pong his clear blue eyes would see the ball over the moment and then lose it forcing bomb to drop the sports he remained surprisingly a beat focusing on pleasures he could Enjoy, such as walking two miles a day near the Princeton campus. Grateful he could read and write despite the decline of his fine, sharp state ahead. Vision Baum maintained the unbreakable optimism. Let the problem be, Baum liked to say, usually with a smile, when his kid came to him with concern. It will solve itself. 
After Simon left the IDA to lead Stony Brook's mathematician mathematics depart, department, however, the Baum family began to detect uncharacteristic frustration in the patriarch when Baum broke Russian code and identified a spy, but the FBI proved to slow arresting the suspect. He expressed irritation. Baum became discouraged about his unit's future, writing an internal memo emphasizing the need for better recruitment. It is obvious that the loss of Simons is serious for us, both because we need him mathematically and because of the manner of his departure. Baum wrote referring to Simons firing in the period of seven months when Simons supposedly wasn't working on defense material. He in fact did more work on defense projects than some of our members have done in the last few years. One day in 1977, Simons reached out to Baum asking if he would spent one day at Momatrix office on Long Island helping Simon set up a trading system to speculate on currencies. Baum chuckled at the invitation. He didn't know much about trading despite his earlier theoretical paper. Simon cared so little about investing that he left the family's portfolio entirely in his wife's hand. And nonetheless, Baum agreed to spend some more time assisting Simon as a fair of his old friend. At his office, Simon had charts depi depicting the daily closing values of the various major currencies in front of Baum as if he was presenting him with a mathematical problem. Scrutinizing the data, Baum quickly determined that over stretches of time, some currencies, especially the Japanese yen, seemed to move in steady straight lines. Perhaps Simon was right. Baum thought there did seem to be some inherent structure in the markets. Baum hypo Hypothesize that the yen steady climb. Hypothesize that the yen steady climb might be due to the Japanese government under pressure from foreign nations intervening to buy the currency in precise Japanese manner to make Japanese export a bit less competitive. Either way, Baum agreed with Simons that a mathematical model might be developed to map out and ride trends in various currencies. Baum began working with Simons once a week. By 1979, Baum then 48 years old was immersed in trading, just as Simon had hoped. A top chess player in college, Baum felt he had discovered a new game to test his mental faculties. He received a one-year leave of absence from the IDA and moved his family to Long Island and rented the three-bedroom Victorian house lined with tall bookcases. His eyesight had worsened. Yulia drove her husband back and forth to Simon's office each day. Let's see if we can make a model, Simon told him, as they prepared to focus on markets. He, it didn't take Baum long to develop an algorithm directing more metrics to buy currencies if they move to a certain level due to the recent trend. And it's if they veered too far above it, it was a simple piece of work, but Baum seemed on the right path, instilling confidence in Simon's. Once I got Lenny involved, I could see the possibilities of building model Simons later. <sighs> the name blended high finance with a character known for wrestling with ideals of honor and morality, a fitting choice for someone who long had one's foot in the world of business and another in the mathematics and academia. Simons decided Lemroy would be a hedge fund and loosely defined team term for private investment partnership that manage money for wealthy individuals and institutions and pursue a variety of strategies including trying to hedge on or protect themselves for losses in overall markets. Monometrics would invest a bit of money for Simon's testing strategies in variety of markets. If the tactics looked profitable, Simon's would place the lame, same trades in Limroy, which was much bigger and would invest for outsiders as well as for Simons. Baum would share in the 25% cut in the firm claim for all the trading profits. Simons hoped he and Baum could make a big money relying on the trading style that combined mathematical models and complicated charts and a heavy dose of human intuition. Baum became so certain that approach would work and so hooked on investing that he quit the IDA to work full time with Simons. Mathematicians working with him. You can't see me, alright? Now you can see me. <laughs> Mathematicians working with him 
to unlock the secrets of the markets and enough cash to support their efforts a year or two earlier baum could uh, stop thinking about math now it was trading that occupied his mind lying on a beach with his family one morning during the summer of 1979 baum mulled, mulled the extended weaknesses in the value of british pound at the time he the conventional wisdom was that the currency could only fall in value once expert who advised simons and baum on their trading made so much selling pounds that he named his son sterling ye was the baum was creative yaar relaxing on the beach that morning baum sat straight up overcome with excitement he was convinced of buying opportunity was at hand baum raised to the office telling simon that margaret thatcher britain's new prime minister was keeping the currency at unstably low levels thatcher is sitting on pound baum said she can't hold it down much longer baum said they needed to buy pounds but simon's was amused rather than swayed by baum's sudden conviction lenny it is too bad you didn't come in earlier simon's responded smiling thatcher stood up the pound just rose 5 cents that morning it turned out the thatcher had decided to let the pound rise in price baum was unfazed that's nothing he insisted it's going to go up 50 cents maybe more Baum was right. He and Simon kept buying British pounds, and the currency kept soaring. They followed that move with accurate predictions. More the Japanese yen, West German Deutsche Mark, and Swiss francs. Yes, that had the South American investors calling Simon with congratulations and encouragement as the fund grew by tens of millions of dollars. They were just as stunned that Baum and Ax had joined him, even. Simon's father seemed disappointed in 1979 at a bar mitzvah party for Simon's son Nathaniel. Matty Simon told a Stony Brook mathematician, "I like to say my son the professor, not my son the businessman." Simon spent little time looking back after racking up early currency winnings. Simon amended Lemroy Charter to allow it to trade U.S. Treasury bond futures contracts as well as commodities. He and Baum who. Now had their own separate investment accounts. Assembled a small team to build sophisticated models that might identify profitable trades in currency, co- commodity, and bond markets. Simon was having a loss, excluding his lifelong passion for financial speculation while trying to solve markets. Perhaps the greatest challenge he had encountered. Besides, he joked his wife Marlin at le- at last could hang out with people and know what they were talking about. The fun wouldn't last. मुझे आ रही नींद दोस्तों टाइम हो रहा है एक बज के पाँच मिनट ये देखिए दोस्तों एक बज के पाँच मिनट और अभी तक मैंने फिफ्टी थ्री पेजेस पढ़ लिए हैं देखता हूँ मैं और कितना पढ़ पाता हूँ Searching for someone to program his computer, Simon heard about a 19-year-old on the verge of getting kicked out of the California Institute of Technology. Greg Hollander was sharp and creative, but he had trouble focusing in his schoolwork and did poorly in many of his courses. Later in life, he would be diagnosed with attention deficit disorder. At the time, Hollander was frustrated by his struggles as were the school's administrators. The last straw came when he caught. Earning an unauthorized high-stakes trading positions out of his dorm room, friends pooled their cash and handed it to Handler, who purchased a stock option before a market rally in 1978, turning $200 into $2,000 in a matter of days. Soon, everyone in the dorm wanted in on the operation. मेरी आँखों में नींद भरी है इसी आँख में इस आँख में नहीं है क्या ये आँख सोना चाहती है ये आँख देखना चाहती है ये आँख सोना चाहती है आँख देखना चाहती है अलेंडर हु बिगैन री पैकेजिंग स्टॉक ऑप्शन परचेज थ्रू अ ब्रोकरेज अकाउंट एट मेरे लंच एंड रीसेलिंग दैम टू ईगर स्टूडेंट्स इट वॉज लाइक माई ओन स्टॉक एक्सचेंज अलेंडर से इज विद प्राइड मेरे लंच ऑफिशियल्स वर एंड अम्यूज बाई हेज इन इंजीन्यूटी citing Hollander for violating the terms of his account the brokerage pulled the plug of his venture and the school kicked him out sitting in his dorm room waiting to be expelled Hollander was started startled by a 7 am phone call from Simon Simon had heard about Hollander's unlicensed trading operation through a Caltech grad student and was impressed by Hollander's 
handlers handlers understanding of financial markets as well as the moxie simon software handler salary of nine thousand dollar a year as well as the share of his firm's profits to come to new york as a program of jim right edit with a round cubic face shaggy brown hair and a boyish smile and it looked like a teenager heading off to summer camp for not someone cut for the cross country trip to join an unknown trading operation a real thing with a thick oversized glass handler Handler kept pens in his front pockets along with the brown case of his spectacles, a look that made him appear especially guidelines, guideless. Handler hadn't met Simons or Baum and was wary of the job offer. Jim Firm sounded like a shadiest thing in the world. He says, young man didn't hesitate to accept the Simons offer. However, I was, I was in my dorm waiting to get kicked out it's not like i had a lot of options handler moved to long island staying with simons and his families for several weeks until he rented a room in a nearby stony brook dormitory the young man didn't have a driver's license so simons lent him a bicycle to get to work at the office simons wearing his uh, usual open colored cotton shirt and loafers uh, gave handler a tutorial on how he approached trading Currency markets are affected by the actions of governments and others. Simon told him and firm hope to develop detailed step-by-step -step algorithms to identify trends that result from hidden actors influencing the market not unlike what Simon did at the idea to break enemy code. Oh, brother, the charge is not finished. The charge is coming. The charge is coming. Simon seemed to take the down, downturn hard, growing more anxious as the losses increased on an especially rough day. Handler found his boss lying supine on couch in his office. Handler sensed Simon wanted to open up to him, perhaps even make some kind of confession. No, what he's doing, Simon said. Handler was startled. Until that moment, Simon's self-confidence seemed boundless. Now he appeared to be second-guessing his decision to ditch mathematics to try to beat the market. Still on the couch, as if uh, in a therapist's office, Simon told Handler about Lord Jim, which centers on failure and redemption. Simon had been fascinated with Jim, a character who had a high opinion of himself and yearned for glory, but failed miserably in a test of courage. Condemning himself to life filled with shame, Simon sat up straight and turned to Handler. He had a really good death, though he said Jim died nobly. Wait, is Simon contemplating suicide? Handler worried about his boss and about his own future. Handler realized he had no money, was alone on the East Coast and had a boss on a couch talking about death. Handler tried reassuring Simons, but the conversation turned awkward. In the following day, Simons emerged from the funk more determined than to build a high a high-tech trading system guided by algorithms or step-by-step -step computer instructions rather than human judgment. Until then, Simon and Baum had relied on crude trading models as well as their own instincts in approach that had left Simon in crisis. He sat down with How Howard Morgan, a technology expert he had hired to invest in stocks and shared a new goal, building a sophisticated trading system fully dependent on preset algorithms that might even be automated. I don't want to I don't want to worry about the market every minute. I want models that will make money while I sleep. And Simon said a pure system without the humans interfering. The, the technology for a fully automated system wasn't there yet. Simon realized, but he wanted to try some more sophisticated methods. He suspected he had need reams of historic data so his computers could re search. <coughs> for persistent and repeating price patterns across a large swath of time. Simons bought stacks of books from the World Bank and elsewhere along with reels of magnetic tape from various commodity exchanges, each packed with commodity, bond and currency prices going back decades, some to before World War II. <coughs> this was ancient stuff that almost no one cared about, but Simons had a hunch it might prove valuable. Handlers, 5 foot tall, blue and white, PDP 1160, Computer couldn't read some of the older data. And Simons was amassing because its formatting was outdated. So Handler surreptitiously 
that the deeds to the nearby headquarters to Grumman Aerospace where his friend Stan worked. Around midnight, when things slowed down at the defense contractor, Stan let a render fire up the supercomputer and spent hours converting the reels so they could be read in Simon's computer. As the reels spun, the friends caught up over office. To gather additional data, Simon had to staff uh, travel to Lower Manhattan to visit the Federal Reserve Office of Pakistan, record in- interest rate stories and uh, other information not yet available electronically for more recent pricing data. Simon tasked of his former Stony Brook secretary and new office manager. This manager Carol Albergain with recording the closing prices of major currencies. Each morning Albergain, Albergain would go through the Wall Street Journal and then climb on sofas and chairs in the uh. Worms library room to update various figures on graph paper hanging from the ceiling and taped to the walls. Arrangement worked like Albergheim <coughs> toppled from her perch, pinching a nerve and suffering permanent injury. After which, Simons enlisted a younger woman to scale the couches and update the numbers. Simons recruited his sister in law and others to input the prices into the database. Handler hun- created to track prices and test various trading strategies based on both mathematical insights and the intuitions of Simons, Baum, and other many of the tactics they tried focused on various momentum strategies. But they also looked for potential correlations between commodities. If a currency went down three days in a row, what were the odds of it going? down a fourth day do gold prices lead silver prices might wheat prices predict gold and other commodity prices there's pattern here there has to be pattern simon insisted eventually the group developed a system that could distance trade her latest commodity bond and currency markets the office's single computer wasn't powerful enough to incorporate all the data, but it could identify a few reliable. Though the correlation is the trading system had live hogs as a component, so Simons named it his piggy basket. The group built it to digest masses of data and made trading recommendations using the tools of linear algebra. The piggy basket produced the row number of the sequence 0. 0.5, 0. 0.3, 0. 0.2, for example, would signify that the currency portfolio would be 50% yen, 30%. After the piggy basket churned out its recommendation for about 40 different future contracts, the staffer would get in touch with the firm's broker and deliver buy and sell instructions based on those promotions. The system produced automated trade recommendation rather than the automated trades, but it was the best Simons could do at the time. <sighs> now let's catch some speed. For a few months, the piggy basket scored big profits, trading about $1 million for Momentrix. Money the team generally held its position for a day or so, then the, they sold them. Encouraged by the early results, Simons transferred several million dollars of additional cash from the library account into the model, scoring even larger gains. Then something unexpected happened. The computerized system developed an unusual appetite for potatoes, shifting two thirds of it into cash futures contracts with the New York Mer- Mercantile Exchange that represented millions of pounds of main potatoes. One day, Simon got a call from unhappy regulators at the Commodity Futures of Trading Commission. Monometrics was close to cornering the global market for these potatoes. They said this is alarm. Simon had to stifle a giggle as yes, the regulators were grilling him. But they had to rely on Simon's arrangement to accumulate so many potatoes he couldn't even understand why his computer system was buying so many of them. Surely the CFTC would understand that. They think we were, we are trying to call the market of spuds, he told her under with some amusement after hanging up the phone. The regulator somehow mi- missed the humor of Simon's misadventure. misadventure. They closed out his potato positions, costing Simon's and his investors millions of dollars. Soon he and Baum lost confidence in the system. They could see the piggy basket trades and were aware when it made and lost money, but Simon and Baum weren't sure why the model was making its trading decisions. Maybe a computerized trading model wasn't the way to go after all. They decided in 1980, Hollander quit to go back to school, leaving college uh, prematurely weighed off him, and he wasn't ashamed he couldn't help Simon make more progress in his computerized trading system. Hollander couldn't understand the math Simon and Bomb were using, and he was lonely and miserable. Weeks earlier, he had revealed the colleagues that he was gay. 
they tried to make him comfortable but the young man felt increasingly out of place i just felt i had better chance of meeting someone compatible in california says handler eventually earned his degree and became a machine learning specialist for amazon and microsoft some things are more important than money with handler uh, gone and the piggy basket manufacturing uh, mal manufacturing simons and bomb different from predictive mathematical models to more uh, trading style they began looking for undervalued investments while reacting to market moving news investing 30 million dollar in various markets some thought it might help if they could get their hands on news from europe before the rival so he hired a person studying a stony brook to in an obscure french financial newsletter and translated before the others and a chance simon also consulted with an economist named aaron greenspan who later would become federal reserve chair at one point simon set up a red phone in his office that rang whenever urgent financial news broke so he and bomb could enter trades before other sometimes the phone rang and they were nowhere to be found sending new office manager penny albert grind caroline sister in law racing to find them between local restaurant or shop or even the men's room where she had pounded on the door to get their attention <clears throat> come back in albergain screamed once what's down 30 points simon's cheeky ir- irreverent sense of humor put his team at ease he had he had teased albergain about her thick new york accent and she had mocked the remains of this boston inflection once simon's became elated when he It's even especially high interest rate of money uh, the firm held in the bank account. Investors are getting 11 and 7 fucking 8s, he exclaimed when a f- uh, young employee gasped at his blue language. Simon splashed a grin. I know that is impressive rate. A few times a week, Marlin became by to visit. Usually with her baby, Nicholas. Other times, Barbara checked in on her ex-husband. Other employees, spouses and children also wandered around the office each afternoon. The team met for tea in the library where simons bomb and others discussed the latest news and debated the direction of the economy simons also hosted staffers on his yacht the lord jim dogged in nearby port jefferson most days simons sat in his office wearing jeans and a gold shirt chatting at his computer screen staring at his computer screen developing new trades reading the news and the predicting where markets were going like most everyone else when he was specially engrossed in thought simons would hold a cigarette in one hand and chew on his cheek bomb in a small nearby office trading his own account favored rajdi sweater wrinkle trouser and horn hush push pies shoes to compensate for his worsening eyesight he hunched close to his computer trying to ignore the spook wafting through the office from simon's cigarette the traditional trading approach was going to well that when the boutique next door closed Simon rented the space and punched through the adjoining wall the new space was filled with the offices of their new hires and uh, including Uh, an economist and others who provided expert intelligence and made their own trades helping to boost returns at the same time simon was developing a new passion backing promising technology companies including an electronic dictionary company called franklin electronic publishers which de- developed the first handheld computer in 1982 simon changed monometrics name to renaissance technology corporation reflecting his developing interest in these upstart companies simon came to see himself as a venture capitalist as much as a trader he spent much of the week working in an office in new york city where he interacted w- with his hedge fund investors while so dealing with his tech companies simons also took time to care for his children one of whom needed extra attention paul simons second child ectodermal display dysplasia paul skin hair and sweat glands didn't develop properly and he was short of his age and his teeth were few when this happened to cope with the resulting insecurities paul asked his parents to buy him stylish and proper clothing in the hopes of fitting in which his grade school peers paul's challenges weighed in simons who sometimes drove paul to trenton new jersey where a pediatric dentist made cosmetic improvements to paul's teeth after a new york dentist fitted Paul with complete set of implants improving with self esteem bomb was fine with simons working from from the new york office was dealing with his outside investment and tending to family matters bomb did need much help he was making so much money trading various currencies Using intuition and instinct, that pursuing a systematic quantitative style of trading seemed a waste of time. Building a formula was difficult and time-consuming, and the gains figured 
to be steady but never spectacular by contrastively digesting the office news sticker studying newspaper articles analyzing geopolitical events seemed exciting and far more profitable दोस्तों 61 वन पेज हो गए हैं मेरा पानी भी ऑलमोस्ट खत्म है वाई डू आई नीड टू डेवलप दोस्त मॉडल्स बॉम आज हिस्स डॉटर सी एस टेफी It is so much easier making millions in the market than finding mathematical proofs. I once suspected Baum too much to tell him how to trade. Besides, Baum was so unruly. The firm's computer firepower was limited, making any kind of automated system likely impossible to implement. Baum liked to pour over economic and other ideas close to door uh, to his office and lie back on his green sofa, reflecting for long period of his next market move. He had lose track of time. Penny Albertine says. There was a bit of space even bomb emerged usually placed by orders and optimistic by nature bomb like to purchase investments and sit on them until they rose no matter how long it took courage was needed to hold on to investment position bomb told friends and he was proud he didn't buckle when others grew weak in the knees if i don't have a reason for doing something i leave things as they are and do nothing he wrote to family members explaining his trading tactics dad's theory was by Lo and hold on forever, Steffi says. The strategy enabled Bomb to ride our market turbulence and racked up more than forty-three million dollars in profit between July nineteen seventy-nine and March nineteen eighty-two, nearly double his original stake from Simons. In the latter year, Bomb grew so bullish about stocks that he insisted on missing the firm's annual outing on Simons Yacht, preferring the motor to the market and buy more stock futures around the noon when Bomb willingly joined his colleagues. Asked why he looked so glum, I got half of what I wanted. Bomb said, "Then I had to come to this lunch." Bomb probably should have stayed in the coffee office. He had correctly identified that the year's historic uh, bottoming out of the U.S. stock market, as stock soared, soared, and its profits piled up. Lenny and Julia purchased a six-bedroom, turn-of-the-century home on Long Island Sound. Julia still drove on. Loud cardiac, but she no longer worried about money. The trading life had a less salutary impact on her husband. Despite his mouthing, despite this, what the fuck is this, mate? मुझे लगा मधुमक्खी आ गई. Mounts Mounts patient for holding on to investment eventually caused a rift with Simon. The tension started back in the fall of 1970 when they each. Purchase the gold future contrasted around two hundred and fifty dollar an ounce. Late that year, the Iranian government took fifty-two American diplomats and citizens hostage, and Russia invaded Afghanistan to support that country's communist regime. The resulting geopolitical jitters pushed gold and silver prices higher. Visitors to the Long Island office watched as Baum, normally quiet and introspective, stood ex- exuberantly cheering gold higher. Simon sat nearby, smiling. By January 1980, gold and silver prices were soaring. When gold topped $700 in frenzied two-week period, Simon dumped his position, locking in millions of dollars of profits. As usual, Baum couldn't bear to sell. One day, Simon was speaking with a friend who mentioned that his wife, a jeweler, was rifling through the closet, removing gold cuff links and tie clips to sell. Are you are you going broke or something? Simon asked with concern. No, she can cut the line so to sell the. Friend responded, "There's a line to sell gold." The friend explained that people around the country were qu- queuing up to sell jewelry, taking advantage of surging prices. Simon's friend scared if the supply of gold was selling, that could crush prices. Back in the office, Simon gave Baum an order: "Lenny, sell right now." No, the trend will continue. Sell the fucking gold, Lenny. Baum ignored Simon's driving him crazy. Baum was sitting on more than ten million dollar of profits. Gold had skyrocketed past eight hundred million dollar an ounce, and he was sure more gains were ahead. Jim nagged. Baum later told his family, "But I couldn't find any specific news of our action, so I did nothing." Finally, on January 18, Simon dialed the phone broker and pressed the phones to Baum's ear. "Tell him you are selling, Lenny." "All right, all right," Baum grumbled. Within months, gold had paced past eight six five dollar an ounce, and Baum was bitterly complaining that Simon had cost him serious money. 
in the bubble burst just a few months later gold was under 500 dollars an ounce a bit later bomb discovered a native of colombia who worked at the brokerage firm ef hotan and claimed to have insights into the coffee future market भैया कितना समय हो गया तो बहुत हो गया यार डेढ़ बज गए रात के जो लड़ाई कर रहे हैं बॉम्ब और ये लोग लड़ने के लिए पगला आ गए हैं अब इट लेटर बॉम्ब डिस्कवर्ड नेटिव ऑफ कोलंबिया हु वर्क एट द ब्रोकरेज फॉर्म ई एफ ह्यूटन एंड क्लेम टू हैव इन साइड इन टू द कॉफी फ्यूचर मार्केट वन द कोलंबियन प्रोडिक्टेड हायर प्राइसेज बॉम्ब एंड सेवन बिल्ड सम ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट पोजिशन इन द इंटायर मार्केट ऑलमोस्ट इमीडिएटली कॉफी प्राइसेज ड्रॉप टेन परसेंट कॉस्टिंग द मिलियंस वन सेकिन साइमन डम डेज होल्डिंग बट बॉम्ब कोडेंट बियर सेलिंग इवेंचुअली बॉम्ब लॉस सो मच मनी ही हैड टू आस साइमन टू गेट इट ऑफ द कॉफी इन्वेस्टमेंट फॉर हम was able to do it himself bomb later described uh, described the episode as the dumbest thing i have ever did in in this business bomb's eternal optimism was beginning to wear on simons he had the buy low part but he didn't always have the sell high part simons later said dosto jo thakan ho rahi hai yaar ab aa rahi hai neend god damn बस सोएंगे नहीं ये काम करने निकले हैं तो करके पूरा सोएंगे बाई नाइनटीन एटी थ्री बॉम एंड इस फैमिली हैड मूव टू बर्म्यूडा वेयर दे इंजॉय द आईलैंड आइडिलिक वेदर एंड फेवरेबल टैक्स लॉज द आईलैंड ब्यूटिफुली री इन्फोर्स बॉम्ब सब बीट नेचर एंड पोल्यूशन इंस्टिंग यूएस इन्फ्लेशन सीम अंडर कंट्रोल एंड फेडरल रिजर्व चेयर पॉल वॉकर प्रोडिक्टेड डिक्लाइन इन इंटरेस्ट रेट्स बॉम्ब परचेज टेंस ऑफ बिलियंस ऑफ डॉलर जो खुजली हो रही पीछे ऑफ यू एस बाउंड एन आइडियल इन्वेस्टमेंट फॉर दैट काइंड ऑफ एनवायरमेंट बट पैनिक सेलिंग ओवरकेम द बॉन्ड मार्केट इन द लेट स्प्रिंग ऑफ नाइनटीन एटी फोर एम एट सर्जिंग बॉड इंश्योर इंसुरेंस बाय द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ प्रेसिडेंट रोनाल्ड रीगन एंड रैपिड यू एस इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ एज एस लूज इज ग्रो बॉम मेनटेन एज टिपिकल इक्वेनिटी बट साइमन फीड द ट्रबल्स को टेक द फॉर्म डाउन दैट इन द प्लानी डोंट बी स्टबन साइमन फीड Bombs losses kept growing. A huge wager that the yen would continue to appreciate also backfired, placing placing bomb under even more pressure. This cannot continue. Bomb said one day, that in sitting as a computer scene when the value of bomb investment position had plummeted. Forty percent had triggered an automatic clause in his agreement in Simon's forcing Simon's to sell all the bombs holding at unwind their trading affiliation. A sad D. डिनोमेंट टू डिकेट लॉन्ग रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन एस्टीम्ड मैथमेटिशियन चैप्टर फोर आने वाला है खत्म होने वाला है Passing drivers sometimes slow to offer assistance to slow well dressed order gentlemen, but he always declined the help. Bomb would spend hours sitting in the sun at the coffee shops striking up conversation with strangers family members sometimes found him gently comforting homesick undergraduates in the summer of 2017 weeks after finalizing his latest mathematics paper bomb passed away at the age of the 86 his children published the paper posthumously bomb loses in 1984 trading debacle left deep scars on simon c halted his firm's trading and held disgruntled investors at bay one staffer eagerly greeted the frequent calls from simon's friend who asked how are we doing and that was the fund was losing millions of dollars really simon's in- instituted a new rule with clients no performance result until the end of the each month the losers had been so upsetting that simon's contemplated giving up trading to focus on his expanding technology business simon's gave a gave clients the opportunity to withdraw their money most showed faith hoping simon could figure out a way to improve the results but simon himself was racked with self doubt the setback was stomach wrenching he told a friend there is no rhyme or reason so i had to find a different approach teen chapter khatam 2 ghanta 16 minute mein abhi hame itni khatam karni hai aap mere sath hai na छोड़ के मत जाइएगा मुझे छोड़ के मत जाइएगा <laughs> मन नहीं कर रहा यार लेकिन आई हैव कम दिस बार मैं नहीं छोड़ के जाऊँगा लेकिन मुझे नींद भी आ रही है डेढ़ बज रहा है दोस्तों देख सकते हैं आप टाइम वन थर्टी वन है बट मैं इतनी दूर आया मैं छोड़ के नहीं जाऊँगा
मैं लगे रहूँगा लगे रहूँगा मैं करता रहूँगा चैप्टर फोर टू इट इज मच टू कॉम्प्लिकेटेड टू अलाउ फॉर एनी थिंग बट अप्रोक्सीमेशन ऑफ द सीन हो रहे हैं Jim Simons was miserable. He hadn't abandoned a flourishing academic career to deal with sudden losses and grumpy investors. Simons had to finish a different method to speculate on financial markets. Lenny Baum's approach reliant on intellect and instinct and just didn't seem to work. It also left Simons deeply unsettled. If you make money, you feel like a genius. And he told a friend, "If you lose, you're a dope." Simon called Charlie Fairfield the investor who had made him a millionaire speculating on sugar contracts to share his frustrations it's just too hard to do it this way simon said sounding exasperated i have to do it mathematically simon wondered if the technology was yet available to trade using mathematical models and preset algorithms so to avoid the emotional ups and downs that come with being the market with only intelligence and intuition simon said still had james ax working for him a mathematician who seemed perfectly suited to build a pioneering computer trading system samus resolved to back ax with ample support and resources hoping something special would emerge for a while it seemed an investing revolution was at hand are yaar neend aa rahi hai neend aa rahi hai yaar mere ko neend aa rahi hai garmi bhi lag rahi hai thoda der se chala leta hu no one understood why james ax was always so angry there was the time he drove his foot through a department wall the fist fight he started with a fellow mathematician and the effective he regularly directed a colleagues ax squabbled about credit due settled if someone let him down and shouted if he didn't get his way the rage didn't make him much sense ax was an acclaimed mathematician with chisel good looks and a biting sense of humor he enjoyed professional success and acclaim from his peers yet most days ax was this disagreement away from fire fighting eruption of peak and dudgeon his gifts emerged at a young age born in the bronx ax attended souvenirs high school in lower manhattan new york city and most prestigious public school later बस जा रहा हूँ no claiming notable contributions to the development of microwave physics radar and the us space program ax concealed deep suffering that wasn't immediately apparent amid his academic achievement when he was 7 his father and had abandoned the family leaving the boy dis- disconsolate growing up ax battled constant stomach pain and fatigue ha ha kar lunga yaar kaise mat aa raha hu it took doctor central his late teens to deliver a diagnosis of crohn's disease prompting series of treatments that helped ameliorate his condition in 1961 ax earned a phd in mathematics from the university of california berkeley where he became friends with simons a fellow graduate student ax was the first to greet simons and his wife in the hospital after the barbara gave birth to their first child as a mathematics professor at cornell university ax helped develop a branch of pure mathematics called number theory in the process he forged a close bond with a senior tenured academic named Simon Cockin a mathematical logician together the professors tried to prove a famous 50 year old conjecture made by the famed austrian mathematician emil artin meeting the immediate and enduring frustration to blow off steam ax and cockin initiated a weekly poker game with colleagues with other in the athakia new york area what started as what started as friendly get together with winning pots that really topped 15 dollars grew in intensity until the men fought over stakes reaching hundreds of dollars ax was decent poker player but he couldn't find a way to beat cockin growing more infuriated infuri- in, infuriated with each loss ax became convinced cockin was gaining a crucial advantage by reading his facial expressions ax had to hide still one summer evening as the poker player sat down to play in a brutal heat wave ax showed up wearing a heavy woolen ski mask to conceal his face sweating profusely 
and barely able to see through the mask narrow opening ax somehow lost to kokin again ax stalked away from the game fuming never to uncover kokin's secret Ax spent the 1970s searching for new rivals and ways to best best them. In the addition to poker, he took up a golf and bowling while emerging as one of the nation's top black man. Thundi hawa khai ho gaya. Ab easy baat karne wala. Ax focused on bulk of his energies on math, a world that is more competitive than most realize. Mathematicians usually enter the field. Out of love, of a love for number. <sighs> Andrew Bell is the Princeton mathematician famous for proving the Fermi conjecture. Conjecture describes mathematics as a journey through a dark, unexplored mansion with the months or even years spent stumbling around. Along the way, pressures emerge. Math is considered a young person's game, though. who don't accomplish something of significance in their 20s or early 30s can be their chances slip away even as ax made progress even as ax made progress in his career anxieties and irritations built one day after complaining bitterly of cocaine that his office was too close to the department's bathroom and that sounds from inside were interfering with the concentration ax drove a boot through the wall between his office and the bathroom leaving a gaping hole he had successfully proved how flimsy the wall was but ax could uh, now hear each toilet flush even more clearly than before the tweak ax the professor preserved the opening further yelling him as cocaine got to know ax mujhe laga phone band ho gaya kya mehne chali jati मेरे से और नहीं हो रहा अरे यार मैं अब बंद कर रहा हूँ अब मैं बंद कर रहा हूँ नहीं 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 ऐसे कैसे बंद कर दूंगा यार The methods we used were left left field cocking says in nineteen sixty seven the theorem described the three innovative papers one cocking and ax the Frank Nelson Cole prize in the number theory among the top horrors in the field and an award gives out gives out just once every 5 years ax received a fair amount of acclaim and the university prompted him to full professor in 1969 at 29 ax was the youngest ever to hold the title at cornell that was the year ax received a call from simon inviting him to join sony brooks growing mathematician mathematics department ax was born and raised in new york city but he was drawn to it uh, come the ocean perhaps the result of the early up- upheaval in his life at the same time his wife barbara and grown weary of the ethaka's brutal winters after ax left for stony brook cornell threatened to register a protest with the governor rockefeller and simon raided any more of the university's faculty members a sign of dismay the ivy league school felt about losing its celebrated mathematician soon after arriving at stony brook ax told a colleague that mathematics do the mathematicians do their best by their work at their age of 30 at possible indication he was feeling pressure to top his early success colleagues since that ax was disappointed that his work with cocken hadn't resulted in sufficient uh, relation access publication rated uh, dwindled and he threw himself into a poker chess and even fishing searching for di- distractions from mathematics battling clear signs of depression ax engaged in frequent argument with his wife barbara like others in the department ax and wed at the young age before the decades uh, period of sexual liberation are ya ye kya ho gaya mere computer mein sexual liberation and experimentation had begun as ax let his hair grow and began favoring tight fitting jeans rumors emerged of his infidelities others with two young children might have worked on their marriage for the sake of the kid but fatherhood didn't come easily to ax what the hell are you doing ax screen one day 
when Sh- Sharlap explained the best purpose, Axe stormed out, leaving his co workers in laughter. Another time, Axe got into a fist fight with the associate uh, professor, forcing colleagues to pull him off. The younger colleague, Axe's incessant needling, had convinced the younger professor that Axe would block his promotion, sparking tension. I could have been killed. The younger professor screamed at Axe despite the interpersonal drama. Axe's reputation in the field remained such as Michael Freed. A young professor turned down a tenured position at the University of Chicago to join Axe at Stony Brook. As expected, Freed's uh, Fried's ability and the same taken with the mathematician naturally magnetism. Freed was a muscular six-foot athlete with way... Uh, no minutes and thighs second. क्या बोल रहा हूँ यार इतना पढ़ लिया दो घंटा सत्ताईस मिनट होगा एट डिपार्टमेंट पार्टीज वेमेंस नोट एक्स न्यूली डिवोर्स सीम टू टेक नोट फाइड कॉल्स इट वॉज ऑलमोस्ट एज एफ एक्स इन्वाइटेड मी देयर टू अट्रैक्ट वेमेन ही सेज द रिलेशनशिप फ्रीड हाउ एवर एज फ्राइड सस्पेक्टेड एक्स फॉर अप्रोप्रिएटिंग विद वर्क विदाउट शेयरिंग द प्रॉपर क्रेडिट फॉर इस पार्ट एक्स बिलीव्ड फ्राइड वॉज इन शोइंग हिम द अप्रोप्रिएट अमाउंट ऑफ रिस्पेक्ट अराउंड द अदर academics at grievance airing meeting with fried simons and stony brook administrator ax caught in fried's face to deliver an ominous vow i'm going to do everything i can do to ruin your career fair or foul at formed stunned fried couldn't muster m- much of a comeback forget it fried responded he walked out never to speak to ax again In 1979, Axe joined Simons in a strip mall office near the pizza parlor and the women's clothing store. At first, Axe focused on the market's fundamentals such as whether demand for soybeans would grow or a severe weather pattern would affect the supply of wheat. Axe's returns weren't remarkable, so he began developing the trading system to uh, take the advantage of his math background x minded the assorted data assignments and his team had collected crafting algorithms to predict where various currencies and commodities were headed his early researches was in especially original x identified slight upward trends in number of investments and trusted if their average price over the previous 10 15 20 or 50 days was predictive or future moves it was similar to the work of other traders uh, often called tenders examine moving averages and jump on market trends riding them until they until they peter out axis predictive model had potential but they were quite crude the trove of data simons and others had collected proved of little use mostly because it was riddled with errors and faulty prices also axis trading system wasn't in any way automated his trades were made by phone and twice a day in the morning and at the end of the trading day to gain an edge of his rivals ax began relying on an former professor with hidden talents soon to be revealed ho oh. ji ha dosto 1 lakh words ye re एक लाख वर्ड्स हो गए फाइनली हो गए फाइनली हो गए जिसने भी यहां तक देख लिया थैंक यू दोस्तों एंड तक देखने के लिए मेरा तो सर फट रहा है अभी गला जल रहा है पानी खत्म है पानी दे दे यार अरे तो पानी है like share and subscribe